Rob, kick two goals. Well, so he's a dangerous he matchup, is. and who? I've never well, gone. Who, who do you think, Shorey? Sure, because oh, they don't really tag Collingwood. No, nah, I think because the way that he can move from one end to the other, I reckon Wellingham might get the job. But if he goes forward, I think Goldsack is the player who can play on him, other than Maxwell, mm. because at ground level, uh, he's super quick. Goldsack, he's got the height factor. He gets a hand in pretty well. The other ones are Lenny Hayes. How do you stop Lenny Hayes' impact? Do they go with just a Pendlebury to see let Lenny Hayes go in and Pendlebury hurt him forward the other way? Luke Ball is found wanting last week, so that's another well, issue for them. But both ends of the ground, you said it, Maxwell, Gilbert, Fisher, who do they release? The side, I think, that releases that, that player to the best of their ability to be able to become a link-up player and also an intercept mark player, as David King talks about, they are some of the issues that we'll see. Who allows who to get that and dominate that area? Just two things. Farron Ray did the job on Dane Swan the second half. Will he start on Dane Swan? I think they might just go with it. Yep. Say, mate, we're pretty happy with what you did. And Daisy Thomas was out now, Collingwood's best player last week. I wouldn't be surprised to see Clint Jones go down and lock him up and see what he can do with it. Knowing that Goddard, Hayes and Montagna might get the negating sort of look at from Collingwood's point of view. This is a, a fantastical tactical game. All right, here come the Saints. They walk up the race. Nick Rewalt leads them out. Baker on one side, Jones on the other. Listen to the roar here. The Saints arrive on the MCG. Nick Rewalt high fives the young man that will lead them through the banner. He looks like he's three or four years of age, the moment of his life. And the Saints are ready to play as they come out, David King. Well, they are, and they're going to be challenged today. There's no doubt about that. The almighty pies uh, have been the case in 2010. They've been the dominant force. I think the biggest issue that Collingwood have got is when they step forward of centre, how they deliver the ball. Last week, they bombed the ball in an inordinate amount of time. So I did some research during the week. 34 kick entries from 70 metres out from goal. That's too deep. It, against modern defences, you can't bomb the ball in. They, they were almost kicking it NFL-like with an enormous hang time in here, and that gave Fisher and Quilt, the guys you talk about, opportunity to get across and impact a third man assist. Today, Collingwood need to run the ball. They need to carry the ball forward to centre. Carry it as far as they can. It's, it's a perfect day to do it, Kingy. Yeah, and that'll keep the secure to one-on-one defenders. That They won't be able to assist each other if you run and carry the ball into your fall line. The Saints were fantastic, but largely off the back of two guys. Yeah. I think really, if they can stop Hayes and Goddard the pies, I don't know where they turn to after that. Last week in the second half, every time Hayes got it, he kicked it to Goddard. Every time Goddard got it, he kicked it to Rewalt. And they, they don't go inside 50. The lesser lights didn't touch the ball the second well, half. Well, Sano and Graham, as you say, they're quality players, Kingy. They're the blokes who've got to lift this week. Yeah. And I, I reckon the question was put to Del Sano. Rossi Lyon, I, I just watched a bit of vision during the week. He was talking to Del Sano. And, and I'm serious. I don't think he was hard enough for the contest. And number one, I don't care if you've got an injury. This is the grand final. Don't play and play someone else. But when you put your hand up, you're going to stand up. And Del Sano's got to do that and Graham today. There's no doubt those two players. Players Del Santo and Graham had poor grand finals last week, and there's no doubt the coaches put the acid on them. And what about Rewalt? I think he really needs to not have a, a points decision today for St Kilda to win. He needs they to be dominant. Five, he needs to be five. a presence down there. I know he's a target and he's a workhorse, and we love him. But he had an ordinary grand final against Harry Taylor last year, and he wasn't at his best last week. He was beaten in one-on-ones by Nathan Brown. He can't allow that to happen today. Yeah. At, at worst, it has to come to ground level if he can't mark it. If he runs hot, Rewalt. What's the next move, Kingy? If, you, if Nathan Brown can't handle him, you know, no Preston Giacomo in the 22. Yeah, look, I think they have to try a wild card. If that's the case, you have to go to an O'Brien or someone like that just to see if they can go with him in, in a leg speed sense because he'll cover enormous ground, as we know. Yeah, well, Collingwood Colin are just about to come out, Kingy. Sorry to interrupt you. Nick Maxwell, Nathan Brown, Chris Dawes, Dale Thomas are being led up the race as we speak. It'll be an almighty, enormous roar. St Kilda already warming up at the punt road and come out to an incredible ovation. Had the photo taken. The umpires are out there. Razor Ray Chamberlain, Brett Rosebury and Sean Ryan. And here come the pies. You can hear the chant going up. Stadium is pretty uh, pretty much evenly matched, although Scotty Reckon is slightly St Kilda. Here are the magpies. Scotty, what's it like down there at the moment, Scotty? Oh, this is magnificent as the song comes out, blaring. This is just huge. Surely nailed it before, too. There is so less corporates than there were last week. It's just the people here, the supporters who really, really care. Have a listen to this. This is just what we play footy for on the best day of the year. Uh, Scotty coming down there, soaking up the atmosphere. If you're listening through 6PR in Perth or 5AA in Adelaide or 3MR 
Mildura, and Mildura, wherever you are around the nation, it is a perfect day for footy in Melbourne. Oh, absolutely. And I think the weather will take its toll. The conditions out there today, it is, it's going to be tough for these players come late in the game. I think that this really suits Collingwood early because they're fast starters, as we yeah. know. They want to play an open and out, run and gun type footy. It's wide, but it's fast. And I, I think if they don't get scoreboard reward early, then it'll be a factor late in the game because it's, it assume it'll be similar to last yeah. week. The Saints will come back at them, or if they haven't already uh, matched them in that effort. I think the other area, Darren Jolly, you would hope, is going to have play a stellar game. I just thought that Ben McAvoy, I think Kaczynski and McAvoy nearly have to go 50-50, maybe even 60-40, Kaczynski's way. Because once he went into the ruck, geez, mobility was a problem for Jolly. You hope that wouldn't be the case today. And young McAvoy, all he's got to do is to compete, not allow Jolly to get forward, Rob, and also to just be good around the contest, at least get the hand in so he doesn't have a total dominance. One thing about McAvoy, I think McAvoy can go to full forward and uh, and maybe spend 20 minutes there through the course of the game. Michael Gardner, the ruckman who's out injured, he probably struggled to play that tall forward role, not mobile enough. McAvoy's a little bit quicker, can take, yeah. I think he's a better mark, so we might see McAvoy stay on the ground when Cozzy has a run in the ruck, but I'm pretty sure that Jason Blake will go with Lee Brown when he goes into the ruck for what, the Pies. What do you do with Sam Gilbert? Where do you start here? Because he's fantastic at half that's, forward in the second half. That's the question, Kingy. Graham, Gilbert and Goddard, the three Gs, they're the three that I'm looking out for at the start of this game because I'm not sure where they'll play. They don't have to go into the back line because they've got players like Dempster, Fisher, Quilt, Baker will be in the back line, Zach will take Cloak, Blake will take Lee, Lee Brown, we know that. So it just gives St Kilda a bit of flexibility with Graham and Gilbert and Goddard who can all play as half-backs to play midfield and Goddard even forward. I think you go with the structure that's made you great and the St Kilda defensive structure has been that. I'd start Gilbert in defence. If they can freewheel him, he just gives as many attacks anyway from that half-back line. Yeah. Then, But what they've got to identify, which they didn't do last week early enough, when it's not working, get him up there. Right. Throw, they've got to be quick. And he was very proactive, Ross Lyon, at half-time. I think that had to be made because they were totally dominated in that second quarter. Maybe 10 minutes sweet. They've got to be so much better off for it. They've had the experience. They've had another week. Hasn't been as intense, but obviously it's a grand final. And here they are out in front of around 100,000 people again. Perfect conditions. You couldn't ask for any more. You know what? The Saints were one goal down at quarter time last week, but the dominance of play that Collingwood, you just thought they should have been three or four, but they were only one. Yep. It was that second quarter where I think Collingwood had over 20 inside 50s to about seven. Yeah, that's right. So they did. Let's go down to Scotty Cummings and soak up a bit more of this atmosphere. Scotty, just describe what you're seeing at the moment as the players are almost about to belt out the national anthem. Yeah, they've all had their shots on goal as uh, Ballsy said, Nick Rewell. Looking pretty good. His first couple he kept pulling, but uh, after that he's fixed that problem and uh, was kicking straight low key. Not bad at all. Conditions are absolutely spot on. I'll get onto those a bit more, but just going into their huddles now just for one final chat before they head in for the national anthem. I'll tell you what, you thought the roars when they walked out onto the ground were big. I reckon after the National Anthem, we're going to have the, one of the biggest roars you've ever heard in grand final history. This is the best atmosphere I've, I've been involved in for a very, very long time. Who, who's going to start on the bench today, Scotty? Benches are. I'll give you Collingwood's uh, Tyson Goldseek, Dane Beam, Sharon Wellingham and Jared Blair. And at the Saints, it's Jason Grant, little angry man Stevie Baker, Brett Peake and Robert Eddy. And Scotty, the player that everyone's wanting to really break out this week, Nick Del Sando, what was his warm-up like? He moved pretty well. He actually moved fairly well. I kept a close eye on him and Jason. Jason Graham. Jason Graham was doing some kicking from about 40 metres, you know, about 40 metres of distance, not bad. That roar there is Nick Maxwell taking his pies down to the goal square in front of the members and they let them know how much they love them. But Del Sano and Graham both moving okay, Tone. All right, Scotty Cummings down there for Resi Home Loans. Who's going to belt out the national anthem for us? Tone, who's singing the national anthem today? Julie Anthony. Julie Anthony. As the players now come over, Nick Rewalt looks all business as the MCG starts to rise out of their seats for the playing of the national anthem. Nick Rewalt forms a straight line from the middle of the ground out towards the interchange area. Collingwood over just a couple of seconds later than St Kilda. St Kilda already in a line. Collingwood yet to do that. The Premiership Cup sits on a little dais in the middle of the competing teams. The umpires today, Brett Rosemary, Ray Chamberlain, Sean Ryan, they're lined up. The Master of Ceremonies, Craig Willis, is with us. Ladies Julie Anthony is ready to go. The Australian National Anthem to be performed by Julie Anthony.
Tony, that is the way the national anthem should be sung. Not messing around with it. The crowd loving what's gone on here in the hour build up to this game. Lionel Richie, they loved him. Julie Anthony, fantastic. Lionel and Julie, class acts. Well done to the AFL. They've just picked the mark here beautifully. Well, I'll tell you what, Shuri, uh, you can't back quality and you can't back experience. Yes, so, exactly. Uh, I'm just giving <laughs> a bit of plug for age. Uh, uh, Rob Wall's there with Tony Shaw, David King. Let's get a final thought in a paragraph from each of our special comments, guys, here, starting with you, Tony Shaw. Uh, I'm going with the Pies. I picked the Pies last week by 10 points. Of course, we had the draw. I think they go deeper in midfield. I think that St Kilda depend on too few, and some of those players are brilliant last week. If they get a bit out of Del Santo and uh, Graham and they become dominant players, gee, that's the issue for Collingwood. The longer it goes, though, and they hang, hang in there, the Saints, and Collingwood don't put them away, the Saints, I think, would be a chance. I'm going Collingwood for 10 points. Toss of the coin. Collingwood have won that. Mick Maxwell and uh, Rewalt, they know each other too well. They seem to be shaking hands every five minutes these days. <laughs> Maxwell has won the toss. Kick to the city. Collingwood into the ground. Robert Wall. I'll give you a paragraph, not a story like Shorey BT. Yeah, well, OK, that was a paragraph. Nick Rewalt, Nick Rewalt uh, needs to play a BOG today to get his team home. I think he's capable of it. Rob Walls on 3W Football. That's a sentence. David King. I think the Pies will win. I think they'll win well. I think that they blew an opportunity last week. Their midfield will be better this week. They will perform more evenly. And it'll be the battle of the midfield of Collingwood versus the leadership group of the Saints. Scotty Cummings, who wins it? I think Collingwood wins by about uh, two goals, BT. And a beautiful day for their skills and uh, conditions are just magnificent. I've never seen a better day weather-wise for a grand final. Tony Leonard, who wins it? Uh, I think the Pies will win it. Thought they learned a lot from last week. Younger bodies, hot day, gets them home when it counts late in the game. Graham Bond, your thoughts on who might win here today? St Kilda need a lot more from their bottom four players this week if they are to get anywhere near as close. They didn't get anything last week and managed to draw. If they get more this week, they can win it narrowly. And to add to that, Collingwood need a lot more from their top four and yes. top half dozen. So, uh, point well made there, Bondi. Now, Rewalt and Cozzy are going deep as we start to find out. Collingwood to the city end, St Kilda to the punt road end. Del Santo going into the forward 50 and uh, I reckon they needed to do that. Let's try to pick up Goddard Gilbert, and Graham. Gilbert going back. Gilbert going back. Well, uh, they've started Baker on the bench, so that'll be uh, the reason for that. And we're looking at the midfield. Looks like it'll be Goddard, Clint Jones, Farron Ray and big boy McAvoy. What about the Pies, boys? Any changes there? Looking at Benny uh, Johnson going into the back line. Down there with Nathan Brown, Young Reed, uh, Harry O'Brien and Nick Maxwell. So no changes in the no. Collingwood defence. They've gone with their same structures, haven't they? Nearly Pendlebury, both sides. Pendlebury forward, boys. He was a spark in so, the uh, so Pendlebury final. The so, starting four for Collingwood in the middle. Jolly. Um, Ball, Swan and Thomas Jones, Hayes, Big Boy McAvoy and Goddard uh, the starting four in the middle for the Saints. Now what's happened here Farron Ray has gone down to pick up Penelbury I don't know if he's going to tag there, he was looking into the centre maybe to go to Swan so Collingwood's had a win with Penelbury going forward. Two hours time we will have a winner this week ball bounced, play underway Tad Jolly, middle of the ground, no clearance yet trying to barge through, Goddard not able to take it knock forward by ball, coming through Schneider tackle, handball away, still into a pack of players, barging through neatly, Lee Brown kicks it wide to half forward, member side Collingwood into a taxi in, doors neat knock on, goes to Pendlebury long kick towards goal, Collingwood mark Travis has got it at point blank range First score of the game coming up after 30 seconds, Tony Shaw. Well, there's that man, Penelby, across half forward. And I think they got this match-up wrong. They Blood got, roll, yeah, Dawson coming off. I'm going to tell you what happened then. Dawes, Dawson was leaving Cloak because McBurney, who's the emergency umpire, went running out onto the ground. And oh, no, he's oh. a result. They've reversed the free kick. It's going to St Kilda, Clint Jones. This is amazing because it should have been a certain Collingwood goal. Clint Jones will get the free kick at centre-half back okay, for the Saints. I'm not sure what the reverse was about. Scotty, I don't know whether you saw it. Yeah, just a knock off the ball. Pretty soft umpire, Gee, but uh, Zach Dawson off the ground with a split yeah. above his right Gee, eye. That, be, that, that, better, be. that better not be soft because Make the cost of team is certain goal in a grand final. They umpired so well last week. Anyway, here we go. Jones, they get a let off here, the uh, Saints. A certain goal for Cloak it would have been. Will goes down the line with a nicely measured kick and finds Blake at half back. So straight away, St Kilda are into this position.
possession game at half back and guess what they're able to control the game from the first half minute of the game no score yet divine scoreboard quill close to the fullback kicks to the wing effective travels 55 meters on the mark schneider out of sight of the ground goes wide lead up man kaczynski at the back read of collingwood does the spoil half back side bottom picks it up gives a little handball frees up ben johnson at half back for collingwood he does got it under reed reed immediately sends it forward with a long kick to half forward pendlebury was being held by Baker, no free there. In fact, yep, there is. Yep. It'll go to Pendlebury. Now he's 70 metres out, Scotty Pendlebury. A beautiful kick there before to Cloak. He's on the southern side of the city end. Lenny Short Hayes ball. is covering Cloak, a real worry. Short ball, finds ball. Ball, not a great kick, we know that in terms of length. Now he's got up. 55 metres out, a chipping ball to the pocket. Here comes Dawes, Fisher gets back. This is what happened last week. Fisher cuts it off again, Tone. So, at full back, they're going to try and run a little route here. Goddard, handball, Gilbert oh. received. Awful kick. Great pressure from Collingwood. Turns over. Harry mm. O'Brien, the unlikely chance to break the deadlock. No score yet, Walsey, after yeah. two and a half minutes. O'Brien's got it for Collingwood, 45 metres out. Brendan Goddard had the ball in the goal square, received the handball, and he just should have got the ball long out of the 50 area. Instead, he put a ball to Gilbert, a handball, put him under real pressure. He's kick went to O'Brien. Harry O'Brien, 48 out, slide angle, gives it plenty. Not going to score, in fact, goes across the face of goal. And in the finish, BT, free kick out on the full goes to St Kilda. Uh, first goal kickers on the punt would be killing themselves at the moment. They had cloak of certainty, they had a Harry O'Brien, uh, perhaps, and they got nothing out of it in the end. <laughs> Fisher in the back pocket will kick it out to the southern side. Beautiful day, bathed in sunshine. Maxwell over the top with a fist, knocks it back. Inside 50, opportunity, sure. Uh, the line and out of bounds will throw it in, David King. Just one thing I noticed, Collingwood straight away, and they cover the weapons of the Saints as they rebound. Straight to Goddard, straight to Del Sano. These types want the ball in the hands of the lesser skilled players. Ball at half forward for Collingwood, 65 out. Swan swoops, kicks long. Blake defensively. Oh, fit of the fumbles, picked up full. Backs and killed it to clear. Oh, this way, that away. Fisher puts Baker under awful pressure. Still in the forward pocket for Collingwood. Travis there just knocks it out of bounds. Shorey. Ball, forward pocket in front of the members. City end. Collingwood end. No score yet. Four minutes gone on. Divine scoreboard. We've played 341 and hasn't been inside no, 50 for the Saints. And a lack of poise from some of the Saints defenders too. Boundary throw in, Jolly knocks down, got it to ball, he's immediately tackled, brought to the ground, picked up in the end, partially there by Dempster, couldn't get a good piece of it, Milne, almost dropping the ball, picked up Johnson, kick around the corner, marking the goal square, no it won't be, almost off the ground, side bottom, had a fresh airy, Baker desperate, Fisher desperate, all of them, Snyder, under enormous pressure of the Saints, this is all happening inside Collingwood, 450, the kick goes into the hands of Nathan Brown, so Collingwood are going to go again. Brown with a driving high kick. It's a high ball. The markers are under it, but it's all the Saints. Bad, kick. Bad kick by Brown, just a bomb. So got an interesting left foot kick from right. centre yeah. half back. It was wonderful to rebound on the wing. Still no score after five minutes. This time St Kilda's turn to go forward. They kick the centre half forward. Ball in dispute. Maxwell leads Kaczynski to the ball too easily. The left foot little spearing pass to the outer wing on the bounce. Side bottom. Let it run behind him. Picks it up on the left boot. On the wing to half forward. White. Collingwood into attack. Close to the boundary line. 55 metres out. Knocked forward. Collingwood. Beautiful play. Yeah. Travis Cloak. Magnificent. Ghosting down from the fence. Tyson Goldsack has it, Walsey, point-blank range, 15 metres out. Yes, and uh, it was well set up by the Pies. They rebounded that ball in the St Kilda 50 so quickly. Five inside 50s it is to Collingwood. And uh, St Kilda barely got it into their forward line. It was a very haphazard kick by Rewalt to Kaczynski. Landed in front of him and then just run out so easily by Collingwood. The nil-all deadlock is about to be broken. Collingwood will score. What does Tyson Goldsack do? They're away, the Pies. There are goals, St Kilda yet to score. Divine scoreboard. Uh, the mood sound by Steve McBurney has not sat down once yet. He's got to sit down and let these blokes sort each other out. Goldsack's playing in the forward line, and uh, his opponent is Jason Blake. Lee Brown off. Inside 50s, Bondi. 5 0 Collingwood's way. Clearances 3 0 Magpies way. Now, McBurney, as Scotty said, still out there talking to the players. Sit down, young man, and let them uh, get on with it. They'll yeah. sort it out yeah. themselves. You didn't get a game, mate. Sit down. Yeah. Hey, this is interesting. Have a look at that. Uh, Dempster's in the midfield running with uh, Swan. 
And uh, McBurney still won't leave the players around. They're just pushing and shoving. Oh, just oh, get, get off the out. ground, you umpire. Don't, you don't see Leon or Gardner oh. running down there, do it's you? It's not about you, man. Get off the bloody ground. In the middle of the ball up again. Thomas was the third man up. It come out the back door to Johnson. Went hard at it. Del Sando liked his movement on the ball. A little harder than perhaps he was last week. Look at this. Thomas somehow conjured up oh. a win. Smashing in was Farron Ray. It was beautiful stuff. Both teams look harder than they did last week. If that's hard to say. Opportunity Eddie. He put his nose over the ball and won it. But it's Bills to Harry O'Brien, the Brazilian Anaconda. Look at him go with a bounce up the centre wing. The kick was horrible though. It spills. McCaffrey got a piece of it and now it's all the Saints. Built at half back, tries to find Hayes close to the boundary line. Great pressure from Wellingham. Tries to knock the ball to the boundary line in the effort. And it was a very good effort. And the result is between wing half forward, out of sight of the ground. What do you Collingwood think slightly into attack. It's a goal to Collingwood and Gilly yet to score. Dempster on Swan's an interesting one. Last week Dempster played half back on Didac. I can tell you this, both sides are really cracking in for the loose ball. A few jittery ones last week, not this week. Both sides have got the message that that is unacceptable. It only happened on a few occasions, but it's not happening today. Again, Fisher loose inside the Magpie forward 50. That's the problem because the way they're bombing it in, he'll just keep picking it off. He has four times already this quarter. Razor Ray Chamberlain to expend some oxygen on this bounce, and he does. Gets it up barely above his head, and his head ain't that high off the ground. It comes to Ray. Shaw tried to pirouette out of the play with the ball. Got hard head over the ball. Pushed the ball another 13 metres forward. Oh. Maxwell comes through. Ran into a brick wall and Snyder. And he was dragged to the ground. And it's on in the middle. Some tough stuff. Commitment to the ball. Second to none. Goal uh, goal Eddie on Maxwell then. Maxwell, though, he's not even putting any time into Eddie. Just running nearly as a loose man himself in defence. Middle of the ground. Goal to Collingwood. Saints yet to score. Seven minutes gone. But Collingwood now go forward. Wellingham to centre half forward and beyond. The long kick. Blake oh, gets there first. Goal sack knocks it away. Back pocket. Will picks it up. Hot handball was stolen beautifully by Dawes. Tries to kick it off the wow. ground. Getting back there. Sam Gilbert saved a certain goal. 1-1-7 the pies. The Saints hit the score. Divine scoreboard as we're going Walsey. Eight and a half, nearly nine minutes first quarter. Yeah, Lee Brown on. Jolly off. This will be interesting because Blake has got an opponent in goal Oh, sack. McBurney's going out there again to get off Brown. the ground. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's making an idiot of himself. McBurney, the emergency umpire, is out there talking to Lee Brown. Just sneak off. McBurney, you know Someone, why? Scotty, you've got to do something, mate. Get I out really, there and get him off. I really want to break him in, too. God, it's absolutely pathetic. It's a grand final, man. The kick goes high. Nathan Brown over the top, knocked it down. Over the top of that was uh, maybe side bottom, or it was beams, in fact. And we'll have a ball up right uh, in front of the MCC you know, men. Someone get geese on the Now, phone. you know what happened then? Jolly came on, Schneider was coming off, and they bumped each other, and he's gone out to Jolly. Umpire will ball it up oh, sorry, here. Lee Brown. Sorry, get over it. Right in front of the members. Brown was uh, infringed here against... Kaczynski, and Kaczynski will get the free Tony Leonard at half-back for 3 out of He certainly does. Wants to go 15 metres defensively. Saint fans have got to be patient. Back to Del Sando, closer to full-back. St Kilda controlling the ball. Fisher wide to the outer half-back flank. And the mark taken out there by Blake. Wants to run. Go centrally to centre-half-back. Or Blair had to make a contest. Ray went at part. Yeah. Good Lachlan partners. Brave stuff from both players. As Ray, he wants to switch plays. Back to half-back member side. Del Sando has it for the Saints. Finds Del Sando at half-back. Now he's very thoughtful as he moves the ball forward. A spearing low ball straight to Tooby. Shocking kick. And the man with the eyes, possumized Tooby, is marked at half back for Collingwood. So they have done all of the attacking here, Collingwood, in the opening 10 minutes. The kick to Dawes, who looks in better form. It's knocked to ground. Jones couldn't control it. Wellingham trying to get on top of him. Didak hasn't had a touch yet. It is early. And we'll have another ball up in the shade of the northern stand here, right in front of the MCC members. 1-1-7 Collingham. St Kilda yet to score. So, got, the, got, they want here, got what they want here. they got Gilbert in the goal square defensively, boys, versus McCaffer. Good move by Malthouse. Wing half forward Collingwood into attack. The bounce as a free kick. St Kilda again off the ball. Yeah. Take the free. Luke Ball running with Lenny Hayes. 1-1-7 Collingwood. Saints yet to score, but it's 11 minutes gone. First quarter. Divine scoreboard. St Kilda yet to go inside 50. Been playing 11 times. They don't look like scoring. Do not look like scoring at the moment. Reed's a loose man in the fence. This is where this ball's going. Blake at half back to members wing. Getting back there, Reed, of course.
Collingwood crunched was Revolt. Ball spills front of the pack, trying to barge through again. Kaczynski, ball knocked out of bounds. It's got to go down there for you for Aquamax. Ozzy made Ozzy design. Yeah, go Swan back onto the ground. There hasn't seen much of the footy. Ben Reed is now going to be the loose man in defence as Kaczynski tries to pick him up. Now you've got Blake in the ruck against Brown. Had all the play, Collingwood, but guess what? St Kilda have uh, still within a goal. Seven points at the moment. After all the play has gone Collingwood's way, here's an opportunity for Peak. He's pursued by Swan. Worried out of it, couldn't handle it cleanly. Peak has another go. Lenny Hayes snuck it out the back door. Graham got it onto Jones. Jones kick around the corner. Maxwell by himself marks. Dropped back into the hole. He did. Maxwell does it so well. Here they go for the first time. Collingwood are able to go to the boundary. Sure, this is the first significant boundary line attack. Maxwell feeds the handball to Ball. Ball was out late. Got it to Brown. Had to put his head over it. Died that was an onlooker. Quilt went in and made him earn it. And we'll have another ball up in the centre wing northern side. Collingwood by seven points. Luke Eat, Luke Ball, you've got to be better polished than that with his hands. Missed the target then. They look like they want to run it, Brian. They look like they want to run it through the wings, not bomb this week. Ball on members' wing, 13 minutes gone. Collingwood by seven points. Ball tackles Goddard. Goddard has it. Then a pack of players again form. Another pack, Bondi for Europe car. Yeah, plenty of stoppages already. St Kilda like it this way. That's the uh, whip bill. Ball up number six. Four boundary throw-ins, 12 stoppages to date. Yeah, Tuvi now on Goddard. Again, bounce, close to members' wing. Jolly, the tap, not able to take it. Jones of St Kilda comes through, tackled by Tuvi. He going nowhere, and the umpire certainly to come in and separate the There's boys. There's blue in the Collingwood forward line, and I think Zach is uh, uh, annoying a few down there. Zach, Zach, and, the sa- Zach and the sack. <laughs> so it's bad. Jolly, the tap, still no clear, and Schneider, head over the ball, comes in. I think we're going to be going, in a matter of moments, to our fourth bounce. We are... Yeah. Well done, the umpires, though. The, yeah, they only down there. The emergency spent more oh, time on gee, the ground man. than on the bench. He's still out there. What about the runner went out to St Kilda and said to Zach, you get on cloak, I want Quilt free. Zach says, no, I'm a good free man. Zach, you are not a good free man. You get on cloak, do as the runner says. That umpire, emergency, if he doesn't get off the ground, I will personally go out and chop his head off and get him out of there in a moment. Here's has from the Toyota logo. A long ball inside 50 for St Kilda. Two there are Cozzy and Rewald. The handball from O'Brien and Maxwell. Maxwell's caught at the tackle. He got rid of the handball. Side bottom under Rewald pressure. Did it well. Look at the lovely left foot kick from side bottom. Found the little man in Blair. The attacking southern wing. Blair's Gotta kick. A little short of McCaffer. Keeps it in front. Did well. Got her off to Blair. Blair stands and starts and delivers. Center wing. Here's the sack. Tyson Goldsack knocked away Fisher. Over the line, out of bounds. 1-1-7 Collingwood. St Kilda yet to score. And Robert Eddy's got the job on Maxwell. That is a massive job. McQualt has got the job on Harry O'Brien. So two uh, inexperienced Saints. Big roles. 14 minutes in. Still only the one goal. And it's Tyson Goldsack who got the scored for Collingwood. On the wing. Jolly. Handball away. Shark by Graham. His handball missed a target. Batted back by side bottom to Pendlebury. Then to Ben Johnson. Kicks it high. Very close to the boundary line. Fly to the ball. Oh, Maga Boy spilled it. Can Collingwood get a break here? Blair picks it up. Just toe pokes 15, 20 metres along the boundary line. Half forward, going close to the boundary line. Picked up by Die. That kept alive. Oh, handball yes. goes away. Misses a target. Coming through this time neatly. Goddard, handball. It's in the halfback. Snyder has Snyder it. Snyder on the run. Left foot kick. Rewall between two. Shaw did really well backing in with the flight of the ball. It's courageous. The kick goes out wide to Lee Brown. Collingwood on the attack. Got the handball to Harry O'Brien. He's had a ripper so far. Short kick. Finds Goldsack, the only man to kick a goal so far. Lovely kick to Beams. And Beams marks right on 50. Plays on with a sideways ball. Ben Johnson is marked. 48 metres out, directly in front. The man on the mark. And Ben Johnson will line up at the city end. Well, see, they've been able to hit that target 50 to 60 from goal. And that's an, an, enabling Collingwood to actually get forward inside 50s that are of quality. 8 to 2 inside 50s. And uh, Bondi will give us the marks. Benny Johnson's every chance to kick this. He's in good form. They've had eight marks in their forward half, five inside 50 already. Yeah. Cast out, Tess Johnson from right on 50. It's a low raking ball with plenty of accuracy. The crowd goes berserk as Collingwood kick their second. 2 1 30. 
that's in 16 minutes of football. They took 10 marks for the whole game last week. Both teams got an extra man in defence. Gilbert for St Kilda at this centre bounce. He's sure for Collingwood. That's the last thing that uh, St Kilda want is to have He's sure down there running free. McBurney, the emergency field umpire, has still on the ground. 17 minutes gone. Collingwood by 13 points. Swan wins the ball to the middle. Kicks wide to half forward. Member side Collingwood into attack. Being held, Lee Brown. Umpire says play on it. Halfback, three Saints arrive. Baker's there as well. Umpire comes in though. Quite happy just to get rid of the boys between wing and half forward. In the shade of what is the new members, ball to be tossed up. Going to the city and Collingwood lead. And about 65 out from their goal. The tap, McAvoy, taken there by Pendlebury. Stripped of the ball, but it falls to Thomas. Thomas got that time. In Beans the in the back, surely. It's seen by the umpire. So Beans closer to the wing, has it to the pies. And Beans has got the ball right near the corner of the uh, square there. Half forward for Collingwood, goes wide, here they go, kick out there and looking for side bottom, he stood and waited, Goddard just drifted across in front and took an easy mark, got to attack the ball side bottom, as uh, Goddard's kick is a beauty, finds Will. Montagna, Will Montagna tell. around the corner to Gwilt, so they've gone from the northern pocket to the southern pocket, the thing is Gwilt's got room and time, he hammers it down the wing, looking for an opportunity here with Gilbert, over the back couldn't mark it, Collingwood two on one, Wellingham's there, keeps it alive, Peak was looking around behind him as Wellingham shoves it down the front of the side bottom. He takes the mark. Centre half forward goes wide. Brown takes the mark. 55 metres out. Oh. Thought about the handball. Did out of shore from 55 out. Won't go the journey shore. And the kick will be rushed through from behind. Can 2 someone, 14. St Kilda yet to score. Can someone tell Brett Peak it's a grand final and you don't look around to see what's going on behind you? You just attack the footy? Divine bringing the action in the first quarter. I'll go let him know. Attack the footy, Brett. It's 14 nil in favour of the Pies. And is it fair to say, David, the way you're analysing it, Collingwood again should be further in front first quarter? Oh, absolutely. All the game in there, half again, Tone. Ten inside, 50s for two goals, two not good enough. Quill, back pocket to half-back wing, out of sight. Players shield their eyes. Oh, the big leap, and what a lovely mark taken by Nathan Brown of Collingwood. Well, he's had two marks, Revolt and none. And uh, St Kilda hasn't scored in 19 minutes. Collingwood inside attacking 50 again. Lenny Hayes fly to the ball, had to oh, go back. Uh, Coming through though with the little headband. Zach Dawson takes it between fullback BT and centre half back for the Saints. Is 2 2 14 enough score, Shorey, for what they've had so oh, far? Nowhere near it. And this is the problem that happened last week too, BT. Saints kicked a couple of goals late. Kick goes up towards Lee Brown. Look at the three on one here. Ball squared the handball out to Harry. He got it back to Ball. Ball through traffic but without foot speed. Was able to get to Brown. Brown takes them on. One at a three. The umpire said you faked it. Del Sando, lovely handball. Oh. Hayes did well, but Harry O'Brien will mark uncontested at half back. And Rewalt is running himself ragged. And I know during the week he felt he should have been on the bike more last week. Well, I tell you what, he is knackered. Baker went without it. Went back and had another dip. The ball's in the middle of the ground. It's a 14 point lead for Collingwood. And a free kick will go Collingwood's way in the middle of the ground. And it'll be side bottom takes it, 14 to nil, Collingwood lead, we're approaching time on first quarter, side bottom, has it no hurry to get rid of it, Con Collingwood just controlling everything at the moment, wide to the wing, Shaw's got it for Collingwood, wider again, close to the boundary line, McCaffer between wing half forward, takes the mark 70 metres out, then he's basically into the man of the mark which allowed Del Sando to knock it out of bounds, so the ball to be thrown in probably about 65 around, half forward right at the city and Collingwood into attack, 2-2-14 the Pies, the Saints yet to score, Divine scoreboard after 20 minutes. McCaffer a little slow with his kill, we'll throw it back in, hoist it in, members wing on the northern side, 14 points to nothing at the moment, we've played 20 minutes, we've entered red time, and St Kilda have not had a scoring shot, or even looked like one yet, the kick goes up to Rewald, punched away by Reed. he had a second bite at the Terry as well, knocked it to Graham, Graham to Peak. this is better now the Saints, got it out to Gilbert, can go over the top to Montagna, he's got Snyder, it's three on one, oh, St Kilda is certainly to score, Snyder will go over the top to Rewald, and Rewald will mark in the goal square, plays on, cuts the boot, oh, no. he stopped the certain goal, he saw, that he is, thought he was home. That is a destroyation, marked in the goal square, should have held up, he saw, ran him down, rushed behind. Lachlan Partners player that day, one of the big moments of the replay, he saw, take a bow, receives it from the kick in at half back to the wing, kick Mr. Oh, Target, back, back against Collingwood free, Dane Swan, two disposals. 2-2-14 Collingwood, the Saints one behind, 21 minutes gone first quarter, Dane Swan, defensive side of the wing on the member side, has the footy, happy to go back, concede 15-20 metres, he 
Lee Shaw saved an absolute certain goal for St Kilda, their first positive move. Shaw goes back to Root, close to the fullback for Collingwood, out wide, out of side of the ground, outside the defensive 50, Maxwell has it, lost it, time to pick it up, just kick it a little short one forward, and goal sack BT, the first goal scorer of the day, takes it for Collingwood. On the southern wing, a little chip kick over the top, finds Maxwell. Good running there BT, good running, they'll chip it down the line as much as they can here. Perfect, as Shorey said to Luke Ball, who marks right on the line, so starting to get a bit of this boundary line stuff happening now, Kingy, that, we, that we're renowned for. They are, this is the kick, this one here is the, the one causing and problems. Bad. And it went back inside, Graham was able to cut it off, Toby did well to keep it alive, side bottoms having a cracker, long ball, Thomas dropped it in the goal square, Pendlebury couldn't get it, McCaffer over the head, Colling with a kick, their third goal! Safe down. And Graham is in trouble, Graham is in trouble! Colling would have kicked the third, McCaffer. Go back, kick a certain goal, he's played on and got run down in a sensational desperate tackle by Heeshaw. Rebound, Collingwood goal, not only that, Graham knocked himself out. He good signs though, he did run himself off the ground without uh, being assisted. He is on the bench now having a spell, but we'll be back. Five minutes to go to quarter time, Collingwood by 19 points. Shaw, tackle, should be a Collingwood free kick. Not seen, Milne protests, umpire says no. Back in the middle of the ground, second rebounds to take place. Joe Blake going forward now, why? Uh, he's gone on Ben Reid. Well, they're trying to get at least a match-up in there. McAvoy, the tap, Hayes, tackle, no room to even think because ball brings him to the ground. Another bounce to take place Tony, in the middle of the ground. We've still got four St Kilda players, Dempster, McQualter, Mill, Eddie, yet to touch the ball. And three of those names don't surprise you. Bottom four. Collingwood by 19 points, four and a half minutes to go. As the clearance is time, Jolly toward half forward. Collingwood, new attack in. Doors! Oh. Third man up, takes a lovely mark, 55 metres out. Beams running through. The kick's oh. awful, though. They've burnt one there. And Schneider intercepts at centre half back. Terrible play by Doors. Graham having a bit of a shoulder attention as well as the concussion problem as well. So he's in all sorts on the bench at the moment. Here's Hayes, got the give and go back from Gilbert. Gilbert goes extremely wide. An opportunity now here for oh. fast Eddie. Eddie with a horrible kick. Rewalt made it look better than it was. Picked up the handball to Snyder. Got it back to Rewalt. Rewalt goes inside 50. Getting back is Reed. Uncontested mark again. Collingwood on the rebound. Thomas over the top. Look at them go up the northern wing. Wellingham with a right, lovely right. ball to McCaffer. McCaffer will go to Cloak along the boundary line. And that is how Collingwood play. Cloak 30 metres out, a real difficult shot at goal. That is, that's the blueprint, Woolsey. Foot passing. In one way, out the other, and let's go. Run and gun, go wide, but go fast. Get one-on-ones in the forward line, and let's expose these key defenders of the Saints. Get it quickly to Dawson's opponent. Get it quickly to Quilt as opponent one-on-one. That's their brand. That's the blueprint. Starts to run in the gutter. The photographers have to shift. This is the toughest kick in the game. It's from the boundary line, 35 out. It favours his left foot, but it ain't easy. Cloak sends it across the face. Never looked like it, in fact. They fly, and the mark is taken by big boy McAvoy. In the back pocket for St Kilda, under awful pressure again this week, the Saints. I suppose Walsey, the bright side, is it with two and a half minutes to go. They only trail by 19 points. Well, they, they are playing ordinary oh, football. McAvoy tried to run a little route, gave it to Goddard, who had to kick under pressure. Back to the oh, middle of the Kaczynski. ground. Ben Johnson knocks the ball away. And well done to Ben Johnson. Had to feel the heat. Takes it. Gives away a free kick. Well, Kaczynski gives away the kick. Ben Johnson takes it to centre half forward. Collingham to attack again. Dale Thomas, position A1. Not able to take it. Del Santo didn't bend over. Little kick off the ground to McWalter at halfback. Gave a little handball out to Jones at halfback for St Kilda. Did it really well and got a back McWalter. Now he gives it to the better kick in Gilbert. Gilbert's got a vacant forward line with oh. only Rewald in it. It's two on one. Collingwood get the numbers back. The sack. Yeah. Gold sack got back. Rewald can't get near it. Handball to Penelbury. Half back. Collingwood on the counter attack. One of the rare times they come through the middle and they find Tooby. Tooby takes the mark right in the middle of the ground. An exhausting first quarter if you're a Collingwood supporter. The kick out wide to McCaffer. He beats Fisher overhead and He's takes the mark. He's been terrific. McCaffer got real toe BT. 19 point lead. Collingwood here. Tony landed a minute 30 to remaining in the first quarter. Too far out to score, so what do Collingwood do? Do they hang on? Are they happy with the 19 points or do they go for glory and another goal? 
McCaffrey kicks it inside attacking 50, but very wide. Dawes goes back, oh. fly to the ball. Quilt knocks it out of bounds, and the result's sure to be thrown yeah. in. Four, half forward, forward pocket left, 35 around from the okay, Collins. Well. Ross Lyon, look the last week. You're going to play a forward line with a structure one-on-one -on -one because you were getting slaughtered by the rebound players of Collingwood at the moment. Collingwood deep into attack, Great led by tap. 19 points. Off the pack from the throw in. Wellingham has the shot at goal. Gee, and it just went across the face, and again they get another stoppage. Deep into attack on the Divine scoreboard. Collingwood, it's against a point post. That's where it'll be thrown in with the pies deep yeah. into attack, leading by 19 points, 20 to 1. Jolly dangerous here. He can flip it over the back. Mick Moldhouse down on the bench as we see Jolly doing the ruck work, and he does just that, Orbsy. Lenny Hayes was awake oh. up to though. It was there. It hit side bottom in the head. He come back, had another crack. We've got a minute to go in the quarter. It's within 20 metres of Collingwood's goal. Wellingham got the handball out. Danger here for the Saints. Picked up by Beams. Kick around the corner. It'll be touched right in the goal square. Three St Kilda players. Jones got a trip. And it'll be a Clint Jones free ball. 55 seconds, BT. It's a big 55 because if the Pies score here, they probably get to the uh, the position where they've had the dominance of the quarter and get it on the scoreboard. So Jones has to go short. The halfback, Farron Ray, good position, takes the mark. The clock runs down. Collingwood 3 2 20. St Kilda 1 behind. Divine scoreboard 28 gone first quarter as. Ray against the boundary line at half back to the wing he goes. Revolt leads up. Goal sack, the pressure. McAvoy slow to get rid of it. Somehow shovels it out to a contest. Gilbert through one, through two. Has a bounce. Needs to spot up a target. Goes wide to half forward. Revolt takes it. Will it bounce up? He's got to have a fly. He's inside attacking 50 from 45. Tight angle goes long across the face. And Ben Johnson was awake to it. Didn't want to play. Allowed it just to bounce through. Concede the behind. It's in Kilda second and their only score of the quarter. Two behind. Collingwood an even three goal lead that should take us to quarter time as Jolly on the end of it takes the mark all on us with the pies first quarter 28 minutes gone Collingwood 3-2-20 St Kilda two behinds goal sack Ben Johnson McCaffrey the goal scorers Rob Walls again I suppose I'll ask oh first up I'll go to you Kingy tell us what you've seen is 20 oh, sorry it's 18 points the right mark showing Collingwood's dominance no it's not it's not but the one thing is St Kilda are goalless that is a huge psychological blow there's no doubt about that. The attitude of the Pies is what... Footy Highlights, brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Beautiful play, Travis Cloak, magnificent. Ghosting down from defence, Tyson Goldsack. Not about you, man. What does Tyson Goldsack do? They're away, the Pies. Plays on with a sideways ball. Ben Johnson is marked. I really want to break him in, too. It's a low-raking ball with plenty of accuracy. That is a destroyation. Penalty couldn't get it. McCaffer over the head. Collingwood by 18 points. The uh, quarter time break. Scotty uh, is down on the boundary line for Aquamax Hot Water. Scotty Graham. Sorry, BT. Yeah, just we've been spent some time down in the rooms, Grammy, but uh, he's not travelling 100% whatsoever, and I can't see him right now. St Kilda would desperately keen to get into the shade just to let you know how the heat's going, but he is uh, missing at the moment, Jason Graham. Okay, Massive both, both, both sides in the shade down there, interestingly enough. Bondi, you're at Custard. Yeah, big bump. St Kilda is the loose man in Collingwood's defence. 14 times the Saints have moved the ball through the middle of the ground. 14 times they've turned it over going forward. Just two effective disposals going forward in the hand. Collingwood with only four turnovers going forward, far more efficient in that area. Consequently, inside 50, 16 to 6, and the marks in the forward 50, Collingwood have dominated 6 to 1. Europe car stats there with Bondi, 18 point lead Collingwood. Here's Tony Short and Rob Ball. Well, I think they've got to get a structure, BT. After half time last week, they went man on man. They're going to roll the dice with Gilbert now. Either Gilbert or Goddard, put them forward. They cannot allow to have Maxwell, O'Brien, and Heath Shaw as a loose man in defence like they have. The pies look like they're sharper. They're they're running the ball well, and they're pinpointing, pinpointing that forward player, as David King said, instead of kicking the ball long like they did last week, especially in the second half. Just looking at Gilbert, you're right, Tony. They've got to get Gilbert forward, and he is going forward. Good. So that's good. They've got their back line, the Saints' back line. That's OK. They're all experienced players. Dempster's has gone back into the back line with Fisher and Baker, Blake, Quilt, and Zach Dawson. Gilbert up forward is a must. Graham's just uh, appeared out of the rooms now. Looks OK, but they're also missing Robert Eddy, so they down to three on the bench at the moment. Daisy Graham has resurfaced. Looks okay and will keep playing, but we cannot see Robert Eddy. The big question is for the Pies, do, 
not for the Saints, I should say, do they push that extra number forward, Shuri, get a six-on-six matchup and not allow Collingwood that spare man. But they've had Fisher as the loose, and he's been the only reason that well, they've stopped scoring. You got, I think you've still got to roll the dice with the King. It doesn't look a structure good enough in the first quarter to win. Uh, so I would go with Gilbert and just have that six-on-six. And six. looks like it's that way now. They've got to win some ball in the midfield. Uh, Collingwood are just sitting in the box seat at the moment. Yeah, Devster's gone on to the wing on to Didac and Tuvi on the other wing on to Montaigne. About to start the second quarter. As it was last week, St Kilda doing the chasing. It is Collingwood by 18 points. The Pies to the punt road end. And it's going to be the Saints to the city in the bump that time. Jolly kick off the ground. Didact to centre half forward. Collingwood into attack. Leading up McCaffer. Bends over. Picks it up. Knocked off the ball by Blake. At halfback, Montagna came through. Fresh air shot. The handball that time from Lee Brown. Mr. Target. Ball goes back to the wing. Just players chasing the ball. Gotta Hunting it in it numbers. A little kick that forward by Peak. Peak to the wing. Missed by Shaw. Picked up by Gilbert. St Kilda away. Oh. Hayes goes. Tackle. Handballs it into attack. By bounce favours Gilbert. Is this the Saints' first goal coming up? No. Missed to the right, one behind. Had an impact early though. Yeah, yeah. Had an impact early. So what? So what do you want on Gilbert? He's gone forward early this time. Who who should get him? Well, who Max, sure Max looked Law's like he, uh, looked looked like Shaw had him in that matchup, and Heath fell over. So that's why he got in the play. Harry O'Brien kicks the ball back into play. Collingwood by 17. Heath Shaw goes to a flyer over yeah, top. Couldn't complete back. the mark. No hands in the back. Set the umpire even and his uncle up here thought it might have been a little pushy here. Uh, as Baker got a handball, a clever Hayes tried to tap it a rewild. It was skunked there by uh, Pendlebury. Got it to Blair. Blair didn't realise the pressure from behind caught in the tackle. Fisher should have been rewarded. He wasn't. The ball spilt loose. Play on. And we'll now have a ball up on the northern wing. Good move by Collingwood. They've got Lee Brown off. They did it in the first quarter. So Blake hasn't got what he thought he'd get. Instead, Blake's got McCaffer, who's too quick for him. Ball on the wing. Collingwood 20. St Kilda three points. It's at one and a half second quarter. TAC bringing you the action as the ball is bounced and players fall to the ground. Secondary bounce to take place. Bang smack on the members wing. Can't allow Maxwell to be versus Gilbert here. They need to get Goldsack on the field, free Maxwell up again. So, it is bounced. Ten players around the football. Third man up, Hayes. Not able to get there that time. Jolly knocks it back. Pendlebury takes yeah, it. Tackles. Gee, a nice little sideways kick. Effective. Daisy Thomas through one, through two. Has a bounce, Daisy Thomas. Beyond centre half. Forward he goes. McCaffer doing a lot of holding with Blake. How's the umpire sits and killed a free to be taken at halfback. I tell you the other thing Collingwood haven't gone with today, uh, Rob, is Lee Brown, Dawes and Cloak in the forward line yeah. at the one time. They've gone smaller. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it's good. Dale Thomas was great then. He couldn't just kick it. He had to kick it to a contest because there was no one deep. He has been very impressive. Ball now in the hands of St Kilda. I think it's Snyder out on the half-back line. A little measured chipping kick inside and finds Fisher. What's he had, Bondi? Fisher on the uh, Europe card. Yeah, Fisher coming in for the disposal. Number six. It's his fourth mark. Kicks it backwards and finds Baker. Almost in the defensive goal square. Second quarter. St Kilda to the city end. Collingwood to the punt road end. Here's Blake going down on one knee to take the mark. Still inside the defensive 50. So Collingwood again playing the game in their half. They own the first half. There's the turnover forced by the play. As Wellingham, and it goes over the line out of bounds. We'll throw it in half forward for Collingwood. TAC scoreboard three gone in the second quarter. Collingwood three two twenty. St Kilda three behinds. At least St Kilda's got a forward structure in place. Ball they th- didn't for most of the first quarter. Ball thrown in close to the wing. Jolly again. Rucks tirelessly. Taps it down. Coming through. Gee, held Milne for a long time. Picked up by Hayes. Defensive handball to Montagna. Kicks to wing half forward. Revolt in front. Ball knocked away at the back. Well done by Reed. Picked up though by uh, 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 Revolt. Revolt. That's it. Got the ball toward <laughs> half forward. Swooping on it. Milne off the pack. Has a bounce. Gives it to Gilbert. 30 out. Slide oh. England. He's burned another chance. One behind. Well, he's missed by a lot. And well played by Mill to share the ball across to him, but at least he's a lively Better structure, forward. better structure, front got a, and centre. Got a bit of toe, Gilbert. It's a 16-point margin, 20-4 to four in favour of the Pies, foregone second quarter. They haven't kicked the goal yet, the Saints, but nearly four minutes into this second quarter, as Tony mentioned. Here's Ben Johnson playing on from fullback. Nice kick to Thomas. Thomas takes a wonderful mark, working in the same direction as the ball at halfback. On the northern side, that's where the shade is. Both teams use the shade at the quarter-time break. Interesting that they feel the sun is a little heavy here today. Thomas with a little low Whoa. ball to Tuvi. Tuvi takes the mark. 50 metres. And that should be 50. Ray had a late whistle. And common oh. sense says, yes, it was a late whistle. It was my fault. But in the end, technicality should have been a 50, I agree. Kick comes out to Wellingham. A bit of a handball and hope. Blair thought he was going to get it. Swan thought he was going to get it. And in the end, no one did. Didact to Swan. Swan to Wellingham. Back to Wellingham on the ground. Put his head over the ball. He just reneged on the contact a little bit. And a free kick will go the way of uh, Collingwood. 
Centre wing. It's a Wellingham ball. And he'll want to play on a go around the corner. He does. A low ball over the head of side bottom. And Fisher marks at half. Gilbert's out again. And that's where they're going out there. Gilbert busy. Second quarter receives it from Fisher. Takes it. It's a 16-point margin in favour of Collingwood. St Kilda go forward. Gilbert wide to half forward. Revol has the ball knocked away by Nathan Brown. And the ball out of bounds, 55 around from the St Kilda goal. Gilbert Gee. can't get that ball high on the wing. He has to stay inside the forward 60 to keep Maxwell one-on-one. Thrown in, front of the pack. Goddard taps at half-back Wellingham. Got it, handballs into space. Coming through, ball, went to ground. Didn't, though, give the ball up. Nice handball to side bottom. Spearing passes of beauty on the wing doors. As a he plays off with a handball to Blair. Blair goes inside, 50 to Didak. Two on one, Cloak shepherds for Didak. Didak runs onto the loose ball. Cloak gave it back to Didak. Tackle for double kick away. Didak scores the goal. Place goes absolutely bananas here at the jerk. Handball from Cloak to Didak for the goal. Four-way change for the Pies there. Four in the changes at once. Stephen Milne came off, had a little bit of a conversation with the physio, now getting some work on his hammies. Just play down there, Scotty, for Aquamax. Any sign of Robert Eddy? Still no sign of him, so they're still down to three on the pine. So it's a 22-point margin at Collingwood. They're going to win it from the middle of the game. Pendlebury scrambles one to half forward inside, attacking 50 punt road right in. Collingwood into attack. Ball just bouncing away from side bottom. Baker at half back, knocks it away. Little handball to Dawson, then got it out that time to Dempster. Handball charge. Oh. oh, Del Sano didn't take it with him. He's over the ball. Picked up by Lee Brown, just kicks it high. Ball at centre half forward, half forward. Collingwood into attack. Lee high that time then was trying to knock it away. Steel side bottom, didn't do so. Half back, Hayes has it. Got a handball away. Collingwood force a spoil. Picked up. Going back, Tone free kick and uh, it's way behind play and it's hard to work out who's gone. I think it'll be a St Kilda ball. Yeah, Fisher's Fisher. got it. And half back gets Lee Brown. And it's, and it's behind the play so yeah. it'll come up to where it won't disadvantage the side. So Well, the umpires are insisting on that so a bit of a lull at the moment. Looks like uh, Farron Ray will take it. So it is. It's half back. St Kilda on the southern stand side. A chance to grab our breath. 4-2-26 Collingwood. St Kilda four behind. Biggest lead of the game. 22 points in favour of the Pies. Farron Ray with a free kick at half back here. A packed stadium full of incredible atmosphere before the game. Lionel Richie just romped it in. The kick goes forward. Big boy McAvoy takes a nice mark. Done just okay. Between centre and centre half forward. Here's McAvoy. Handballs to Del Sando. He was wrong-sided on his right. Straightened up on his preferred left. Off the hand of Rewalt. Spills to the dangerous Snyder. He went to ground. Was tackled. Comes to Rewalt. Kicked it out of bounds on the full Rewalt. And a free kick to Darren Jolly in the back pocket here. Collingwood by 22. Let's have a look at that. Jolly, 17 hit-outs. McAvoy, 5. They cannot buy a mark inside their 50, St Kilda. Going to Rewalt a lot. Kaziski needs a lift. Or they've got to keep going to Kaziski a little bit more. Eight minutes gone in the second quarter. Jolly, back pocket for Collingwood. The halfback member's side. The leapers, Lee Brown can't take it. Fall of the ball. Del Sato has it tackled. And the umpire comes in and separates. They just need Rewald here. They need Rewald to stand up. He's taken the two marks for the day. He needs. He's getting plenty of ball in his area. He needs to start clunking a couple. Jolly, again, another tap. As players just converge on the football and the umpire comes in. Again, separate. This time, just move a little bit more into the corridor. So the Saints have it 55 metres out. Or the ball to be bounced there. 55 out from the and kill the goal. Lee Brown does the ruck work, taps to the boundary line. Dane Swan knocks it in front of him, tackled by Jones, gets rid of the ball, revolt the handball to Schneider. Schneider to Goddard, 48 out, tackle, had to get rid of it. Ray, the handball, great pressure from Collingwood, picked up by Montagna. Oh. He's gone long, Montagna! With the stick. On the other side, one behind. Five behinds the Saints on the TAC scoreboard. Nine gone second quarter. Collingwood 4 2 26. The margin 21 points in favour of Collingwood. Robert Eddy out of the rooms and will continue. What did it do, Wolsey? Hit the stick. It did yeah, indeed. Yeah. Montagna, look at Shaw, run away from the kick in from full back. Hammers the ball to the wing, side bottom, who's been very good. Was out in the maneuver this time by Baker. Taken away from him by Fisher. Fisher is centering ball better for uh, St Kilda. Oh, he Shaw was fantastic. Got the handball away. Kept it moving. Moving Tuvi, now an opportunity for Dempster to repel the attack. Got it to Goddard. He does this one. A beautiful little shimmy. The kick off the side of the boot goes wide. And side bottom of Collingwood marks it to Finter 50. Collingwood by 21 points. And he wants to move along the outer wing. And Dane Beam's unable to keep it in the field of play. Touch. And as the ball goes out of bounds, we approach the 10-minute mark with Collingwood by 21 points. Graham Bond for Europe car. Dane Swine having a quiet one. Just the four disposals coming to the bench now. Ball tossed in. 
Kaczynski does the rut work. The tap went to Goddard. Handball to Ray. Middle of the ground. Wants to get onto the left. Gives a little handball now. Del Santo just made the kick under pressure a little bit. Will it come up to McWalter? It does. He picks it up. Wants oh. to get rid of the football. Didn't need to do it. Ball's turned over. Didak goes to Tuvi at halfback. His handball missed the target. Del Santo the high sideways handball. Oh. Went to Kaczynski. He's mucked it up as well. Ball in the middle of the ground. Can Fisher just stop the rod? He does on the outer wing. Could anyone find their own man with a handball then as the Not kick the comes moment. to Dawson? Dawson marks an half back from the south side to the north side. The transfer oh. by St Kilda is clean and clinical. Peak with a chiseling ball to Gilbert. He's third shot of the quarter. He marks. He runs. 40, 30, 35. He's missed. Hit the stick. Hit the stick. He's hit the stick, Walsey. What has he done, Walsey? Hit the stick. Oh, Hello. no. Wowee. Unbelievable. 20-point <laughs> lead. Gilbert has missed three shots since quarter time. It's, it's a good, good move. It would have been a sensational move had he kicked goals. The kick in, though, from O'Brien was a beauty. Went 50 metres to Tuvi who marks the Tuvi kick I'm not so sure about it's going to be turned straight over picked up Farron Ray on the wing kick beyond Santa half forward getting back Ben Johnson ball carries the pack Gilbert close to the boundary line forward pop no couldn't get away from O'Brien O'Brien kept pushing him back to the boundary line forces him out of bounds forward pocket right at the city end Saints into attack 15 metres around from the St Kilda goal it's still on the TAC scoreboard Collingwood by 20 points I think they've owned most of the quarter St Kilda yeah. here 11 minutes 2 inside 50s for them oh there you go Bondi on the Europe card as the sting from the first quarter when Collingwood owned it Hayes got a high tackle on Blair nothing forthcoming Ray says give it to me we'll ball it up 20 out from St Kilda's goal mount this is psychological now no goals they have no reward for all their work here the Saints it's in the Reverse of what we saw in the first and quarter. 21 Bond- contested possessions to 12 their way. Bondi, you get to the record books. We've played nearly 12 minutes in the second quarter, and, it, and it's one of the sides hasn't kicked a goal in a grand final. Here's Thomas. Got the ball at half back. Oh, waited man. for the handball to Didak, who was superb. Didak around one, then a nifty handball to Wellingham. Perhaps a little cute, some would say. Del Sano got in there. So did Dempster. Eventually they lose control, Collingwood. And now we'll have a ball up on the half back line here for the Maggies on the northern side. So. 26 to 6 in favour of Collingwood. We are now at the 13 minute mark of the second quarter. St Kilda have not oh. kicked a goal yet. He free kick is oh, surely. It's just high leap. Well, he's got McAvoy and Rewalt inside the forward 50. Two big targets. Lee Brown got him high. Kaczynski goes toward the middle of the ground. Now, man free to set it up this time, Blake. Wide to half, forward, right. Inside attacking 50. Fisher wow. takes the mark. He can kick this. Now, that was McCaffer. He's had a great game, but he left Fisher when he had to stay with him and make Blake, who doesn't kick the ball well, to try and pinpoint a player inside 50. Very good point. He just allowed Fisher to run 30 metres back. Oh, gee. Uh, Goddard just put Max down. Umpire raised near it. Fisher though, eyes on him. Will this be St Kilda's first goal at the 13 minute mark? Second quarter. They trail by 20 points. Fisher got into the man on the mark a little bit. Got it high. Missed time the run up. One behind. Seven behind St Kilda. Collingwood lead 4-2-26. 40 minutes gone. Second quarter on the TAC scoreboard. Oh, I can feel Bondi behind me going to the record books. There may be no goals come half time. St Kilda have kicked seven behinds. They trail by 19 points. Collingwood's got the kick in. Sure it is from fullback. Kick into the punt road end. Kicks for himself. Plays on. Then chisels it out wide to Thomas. What a lovely kick it was. And Thomas marks at half back. Plays on with a short kick over the top to Tuvi. Tuvi completes the mark at half back. Eight inside 50 is this quarter for the five behind us to St Kilda, but there's no reward for Collingwood either, boys. They're right in this to Saints. Horrible handball by Tuvi. Blair tried to tidy it up. In the end, Collingwood got out of trouble just. McCaffrey to Thomas. Thomas kick under pressure. Yes. He's kicked it out of bounds on the four. And there's St Kilda ball. There's a few signs there. Yes, St Kilda's terms, but the thing about it, they need to score. They've been totally dominant. I reckon I'd nearly get Rewalt if Brown comes with him up the ground a little bit and then see if they can go through someone else inside their 50. I know he's a champion, Rewalt, but he's lowered his colours. Give it to someone else for five minutes. Quilt on the outer wing, kicks it toward half forward. Ray in front of the back panel. On oh, oh, there he is, you wanted him, Rewalt. Pack mark, fourth man up, takes it. Go to Goddard. 60 metres out, goes long. Goddard. Oh, oh. got it high, free kick to Goddard for oh, mine. No. Up I said play on as Gilbert swung when he no, kicked it. free kick. Paid, paid by the other umpire, boys. It was a free kick too. Going to Let's right. have a look at the replay. 
Goddard got in early and he was grabbed around the neck well, by can, Maxwell. I can tell you, I was watching both umpires, neither of them wanted to pay that. No, they didn't. You know why? Because Goddard initiated the yeah. contact. Goddard, yeah, took his eye, Goddard took his eyes off the footy. Maxwell was a bit stiff that the gloved hand clawed him around the neck. 15 minutes gone, second quarter is this St Kilda's first goal. Goddard! They are on the board at last. And the margin's only 13 points. St Kilda won 7-13. Unselfish in grand finals. St Kilda get their first goal some 15 minutes into the second quarter. And as Tony Leonard rightly pointed, they're just outside now. 13 points down. Nothing in it at all here at the G as we close in on half time. Ten minutes left in this second quarter. Hayes out of the middle with a wonderful clearance. Got it to Graham. He still looks a little groggy. Got smacked again. The kick forward for Collingwood. It's been marked That's by Quill. Mark. Not paid. Beans handball out the back. Swan got a bit of a nudge. No free there. The umpire lets it go. Quill fighting for his life. Jones didn't want it. Dynak around the corner. Shot at the city end Four. at the uh, punt road end. Missed and a minor score. 4-3-27 Collingwood. St Kilda 1-7. 13 on the TAC scoreboard. With Goddard to bring it back into play, Shorey. Oh, here's this man, Goddard again. He's doing it up forward. He went down and kicked out last week a number of times. Goes wide to half back. Blake of St Kilda takes the mark. I think he's had plenty of it so far, Graham. As 9-3 to three this quarter inside 50s for the Saints. Uh, Blake coming in position number 7. So can, we, can we get Stephen Milne into the game, boys? He's had no kicks for the game. He needs to fire. Blake back to Goddard to fall back. The outer side of the Jim ground. Will takes well. the mark. They've done it beautifully. And Dems to BT on the end of it. Just defensive side of the wing on the outer side of the ground. Yeah, half back. They call along the boundary line. Dempster a little chiseler to Graham. Here's Graham. He's just come back on the ground. Ran hard to get that mark, Graham. He did. And he takes the mark on the southern centre wing. Neutral territory. High ball. Horrible kick, in fact. Up it goes. No winner in the air. Off hand. Side bottom did well. Luke Ball was even better. Got it to Tuvi. Tuvi with a bit of pressure. Got rid of the handball. It worked for Blair. I'm not sure it was deliberate. Now to the left foot at Johnson. Johnson of Collingwood with a little chiseler oh, finds man. Maxwell point of the square at half forward Maxwell goes long Swan in the foot race he'll get there no he won't minus score 4-4-28 Collingwood St Kilda 1-7-13 TAC scoreboard well you called Maxwell there in the middle of the ground in fact in the Collingwood forward line that's because he's running with Goddard and Goddard at the moment playing half back for uh, Saints close to the centre half back up the middle this time from the kick in Goddard was good found McWalter gee good kickings it was McWalter goes short it's okay Lenny Hayes has it in the centre square admittedly defensive side of the centre St Kilda going to the city end, Hayes draws a man, wants to come wide to the members wing Blake on his own, takes the mark through the Toyota logo, passes alright, and just coming down from halfback Graham's got it for the Saints. And he goes to Del Santo, look at this, no Maxwell there they're finding the loose man, oh. Del Santo wonderful kick to Mill, didn't mark it in the hands, tried to do it on the chest, get the bloody Dukes out Mill, Snyder's got it at ground level, picks the ball up opportunity here for the Saints, Eddie knocks Beans out of the way, in they go Dempster was there as well, couldn't win it Side bottom with the win in the end for Collingwood. Got the handball. Out of the uh, loop is Thomas. He says, come at me, come at me, Dane. Swan does, but beating him to the ball was Zach. Knocked it to Quill. And St Kilda win it back at half-back. Jones to Hayes at half-back. Oh, great tackle by Maxwell. Turned around. St Kilda retained possession at half-back. Quill happy to go defensive. Back towards Peak. Just wants to draw a man to him. Switch a play to the oh. member's side. Oh, McAvoy, the target. Thankfully, it's Jolly chasing him. Bad bounce favours. Jolly beat one, beat two. Runs to 35. Unselfish play. Goal to Collingwood come up. The pass to McCaffrey for a goal. Red Peak. Red Peak, you are a, uh, not a smart player. You are, in fact, a dumb player because... Just lose grand final for players who oh. cannot control themselves and have enough poise under pressure in grand final. Low scoring game. Brent McCaffrey has two for Collingwood. They're 5 4 34. The margin now 21 points in favour of Collingwood. St Kilda 1 7 13. TAC scoreboard. B2. 7 13 left in the quarter here at uh, half time. Umpire puts it up back in the middle. Jolly knocks it down straight to penalty. There's a clean clearance for the Pies. They go to half forward. Side bottom and Dempster one on one. Side bottom used the bottom brilliantly. He comes around on the left foot. A little low ball to Jolly. Jolly's taken a low mark. Bit of a Swift catch. He's sort of gone past the ball, reached back, and he takes the mark. 
40 metres out directly in front of the punt road end. And he's an accurate shot for goal, yeah. is Jolly. And I tell you what I love about uh, side bottom. He just wins the ball in front position. He's nothing special or, or uh, fancy about him. He just goes to the right spots to win the ball. Wheeled around on the left foot. Daisy cutter. Good mark by the Ruckman. Jolly comes in. 40 to 45 metres out directly in front punt road. Beautiful day. Just a tiny little flutter of the wind. He'll know all about this. To the punt road end, the big man. Jolly comes in, eases it through. Yeah. It's a great kick. Listen to the crowd. And that should have put centre half forward. By that time, Jolly had sprinted through that area. And McMcAvoy was five metres off him. And that's all that was needed. And he's having a wonderful game. Graham, please tell us his day, Darren Jolly. Darren Jolly's ruck work has been sensational, Tony. The hit out so far around the stoppages, he's had 20, McAvoy's had five. Collingwood the break from the centre. It was going towards Swan. Swan's handball over the top to side bottom, to goal sack, back oh, to side bottom. Heavy. It's 30 metres out. Defensive block applied beautifully that time by Denster. Got it to Del Sano. Kicks on the right boot to half back. It goes free kick to Wellingham. Just dragged to the ground. Didn't matter. Fall of the ball went to his way. Back towards oh. Wellingham. The pass just too wide out on the full free kick towards St Kilda. And that's going to be taken by Del Sano. BT in the back pockets. Yeah, you get the feeling the floodgates yeah. could possibly that, open here, don't you? That peak, you have, you don't have turning points, but things in the game yeah. where you just, you've been on total dominance, and that just looks like it's turned around a little bit now. Oh, Walsey called it as it was, and that is the peak kick was unintelligent. This is very similar to last week, though. They need to pinch a goal just before half time here, the Pies, just to be the settler, I think, yeah. given that, that real belief they can go on with it. 27 uh, points at the moment. It was 14 at half time last week, Walsey. Yeah, five minutes to do it, the Pies. Game swung their way again. It has. Fisher kicks it forward after St Kilda owned the first part of this yeah, second another quarter. Turnover. Another turnover goes to Thomas, who's had a ripper game. So is this man, side bottom along the ground, got it to Blair. Lovely handball by Blair to Shaw. He centers the ball dangerously here. Cloak flew with the one hand, couldn't hold the mark. Zach Dawson there, concedes the behind. Oh. And a minus score, Collingwood by 28 points on the TAC scoreboard. And Goddard to bring it back in. It's 41 to 13 in favor of Collingwood. Handball to Del Santo, frees up Goddard, keeps running. Another handball to Montagna. Inside defensive 50, the center half back. St Kilda have it and it's taken there by Graham they've got to get one under five minutes to half time the Graham kick not at you to the feet that time of revolt the champ keeps it alive picked it up cleanly defensive handball to Montagna back to Del Sano to the members oh. because, through the hands of Peak. turnover side bottom gives it the goal second Collingwood away oh no wow we Brett Peak. Penbury's kick was punched away by Quilt who saved the day for Peak. the <laughs> side bottom comes off the ground knackered get him off oh that was a bit harsh that was, that was just too tough too Get high. him off. Sure, he was an uncontested. <laughs> it was too high. Got a fingertip. It's he's, had, hit on the... he's had three stuff ups in three minutes. Pete, get him off. It's a grand final, sorry. Oh, no, well, get him off then. Okay. <laughs> get him off, runner. Boundary uh, ball up here at half forward for the Magpies, who are on the roll here at the moment. It's 41 to 13 in favour of the Pies. And we'll have another ball up half forward. Here's David Kick. Well, he's not by himself. We've got uh, Milne with the two disposals. Baker, three. Dempster, four. McAvoy, four. Cozzy, four. Zach giving them nothing. They've got too many players giving yeah. them nothing, the Saints. Ball powers between wing half forward. Collingwood into attack. Maxwell did the ruck work. Rope though by Goddard. Tried to get it to Hayes. Who got it to Ray. Who's tackled and he is going absolutely nowhere. Blair living the moment. Applies the butte tackle. Uh, for Aquamax, Scotty Cummings. Yeah, Jolly back onto the ground. Penelope having a break. Luke Ball back on. his pandemonium down here. This is just intense footy. Kisitsky the tap. Jones for St Kilda. The kick only as far as Ball though. On the wing for Collingwood. Takes it. Now man free only 15 metres away. He's going to go to Ben Johnson. Let the clock run. It's under four minutes to half time. Collingwood dominating again this week. 86 St Kilda at 13 It's 28 points to lead. Ben Johnson along the wing to half forward. Punt road in. Dawes flies beyond him, but somehow came down with it in the finish. Play it's play on the call. Gave the handball to Wellingham. Sidestep one. Gave a little handball, but he missed a target that time. Montagna picks it up and clears quickly for St Kilda. Gets it up towards the wing on the northern side, but guess what? Collingwood there again. Read to ball. ball goes inside 50 looking for Cloak Cloak in front of his man was being held Baker took a nice mark though can't play McAvoy as a key forward he's too slow ground level the rebound Reed's in trouble yep. Reed looks like he's done a right ankle or a right leg problem he hops off the ground and looks in real problem at the moment as Baker's got the ball at half back and the uh, 
Bench for Collingwood gone into a bit of a frenzy oh. with Reed coming off. The punch back from uh, Lee Brown was great to Jolly. Jolly got a little handball to a Didac. Hasn't had a huge day, Didac. Del Sano got it to big oh. boy McAvoy. He looks completely outclassed at this level. Oh boy. Tackle to the ground with Zach the Dak. I'm not sure whether he's got much of an idea. Handball comes out. Cloak was trying right to pulverize Graham. Look at the Collingwood players come from everywhere. The tackling in this game has been ferocious. Look. Unbelievable. 49 Collingwood tackles to 31 St Kilda tackles. And none better than Travis Cloak there who just drove Graham into the deck. It's not a massive statement, but that uh, this game is done and dusted, I reckon. Collingwood away at, there. Collingwood at half four. Jolly, another tap. Hands and knees. Thomas just kicked it through a pack, only to half back. Kaczynski's handball being stripped. Didak tries to do the look away handball. Hayes oh, away to it. Oh, handball oh. to Zach Dawson under pressure. Coming in, bouncing off each other. Eddie and Dempster. Eddie. Daisy Thomas in there. He is not letting go. Lenny to- Hayes and Didak whack whack at each other. There is just play after play. Lockland oh. Partners play of the day. This intense oh. tackling from Collingwood. And again, BT, Collingwood get it bounced to stoppage. 55 from their goal. I'm not sure what happened before, but Lenny Hayes took two left hooks at uh, Didac. Didn't connect. Well, you might as well hit him. He, yes. missed, he missed with both. He missed with both. I don't know what Didac did to him before. Well, you don't have to worry about next week because we're not coming back next week. And Didac was zigging and zagging like yes, Ali. Right. He oh, put yeah. his <laughs> nose in and then pulled it out. <laughs> Jolly, beautiful. Tap the ball on the stoppage. Ball all trying to get through some traffic. All of the play in Collingwood's period here at the moment. I'm not sure that St Kilda here. You heard Tony Shaw say they are in enormous trouble. Rewalt did well to get it to Del Santa. Another pulverising tackle by Brown. And a turnover. Died act to ball. Ball along the bounding line. Kicks it out of bounds on the ball. And it is a game of tackle, tackle, tackle. 6-5-41 Collingwood. St Kilda 1-7-13. A minute and a half to half time. All on the TAC scoreboard. Can't land a punch when you run him backwards. Yeah. Del Sano just kicks it 35 metres high to a oh, contest. Kick off the ball. Goddard. Goddard. Goddard off the ball. Against Maxwell. Tony yes. Shaw told me that. Goddard. Goddard. Can't land a punch. He handballed. Frees up Montagna. Kicks toward full four. The Saints have got to take a grab here this time. They're not going to. Pretty good. This bloke's best on the ground for mine. Darren yeah. Jolly takes it at full back. You are right, Tony. If you had the uh, Norm Smith at half time, Jolly wins it. Although there was a bit of controversy last week from King about who got the vote, so I'll shut up and leave it to the expert. It's not a bad idea at halftime to get the boys that we think are in front because if they're not there in the end, you just don't know. I mean, someone could impact on the game, but it is an interesting point at halftime. Here's an opportunity now for Goldsack. Goes hard at the ball. It spills out here to our ball. Got the handle to Shaw. Shaw inside defensive 50 at the moment. Snyder worried him out of it. Picked it up cleanly. Goes for the outside of the boot, Snyder. It misses across the face and swan will mark. Deep in the pocket, we've got exactly one minute left in the half. Collingwood by 28 points on the TAC scoreboard. And Swan with the short kick just tentatively gets it to Pendlebury in the defensive goal square. And in no hurry to get rid of it, the Pies. They've done it beautifully. Pendlebury runs to the back pocket. Kicks to a contest. Half-back members side. Pack flies off the deck this time. Can they win it now? Securely. Yes, they can. Goddard again. Great. Give the handball to Gwill. Got to find one at centre-half forward. It was a wonderful kick and this time they're going to. And Eddie has it this time. 55 metres out. Beyond his range. Go short. Man free. Schneider's got it. So it's not. Well. It's just must goal situation here. As we've got 19, 18, 17 seconds to half time. This will be the last kick you'd imagine of the first half. Well, As it stands Tony, at the moment, Collingwood by 28 points. Eight marks to Collingwood inside 50. This is St Kilda's only third mark when you've yeah. got Rewalt and Cozzy up there. That is a not a good enough return. Big kick this. It'll be the last kick, we think, before half time. If he gets it, they will go in 22 points up, Collingwood. They went in 24 points no, up last it's week. It's very kickable. From 40 metres, slight angle. Schneider's got to deliver for the Saints this time. Oh and those my. at the city end, the Collingwood cheer squad, loved what they saw. He missed. 1-8-14, St Kilda at halftime. Frail Collingwood at 6-5-41 in what has been David King. I think if we could just take the last five minutes and the pressure tackle upon tackle, that's Collingwood's yeah. ran and they've stamped it again today. It's been tough. It's been uncompromised. Ball. What a game. Here's a tip. Did you know that Stockdale and Lego could have sold your home during this time? With over 95 offices throughout Australia, Stockdale and Lego sells a home every 17 minutes. So if you're looking to sell your home, contact Stockdale and Lego, the real estate experts, on 1300 99 Sell or visit stockdalelego.com.au. 
is where I want to be. Welcome home. Finding it difficult to kick goals in your business due to poor cash flow? Talk to Key Factors and get your invoices paid when they're issued instead of waiting 30, 60 or even 90 days until your debtors pay. At Key Factors, they'll release the cash in your unpaid invoices up front with no need for property security and no long-term contracts. Sufficient cash flow is vital to any business. So unlock your money now with Key Factors, the simple, flexible alternative. To find out more, visit keyfactors.com.au. For over 65 years, Sigchrome's been the benchmark in quality, reliability and precision. Owned by Davos and Stevos, not Carson's or Crispin's. They're tougher than a Kalgoorlie bouncer and lifetime guaranteed. As Aussie as cold beer, tripping in thongs and third degree burns from a pie. We don't just love them for helping build this country. We love them because they're the best. Sid Chrome, you can a hand a man a grander spanner. Halftime wrap for Metlink. A train, tram or bus is the best way to the footy. Footy highlights brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Dynex runs onto the boot ball. Quote David back to Dynex. Tackle but got the kick away. Dynex scores the goal. Place goes absolutely bananas here at the G. With the stinger is this St Kilda's first goal. God art. They are on the board at last. Hit the stick. He's hit the stick. Walsy. Jolly beat one, beat two. The pass to McCaffrey for a goal. Red Pete, you are in fact a dump by it. Oh. Jolly comes in, eases it through. Yeah. It's a great kick. Listen to the crowd. Oh. He's had three stuff ups in three minutes. Pete, get him off. Half time here at the MCG. Collingwood inch closer. They lead by 27 points at half time. 6 5 41 to St Kilda. 1 8 14. Time to start the half time wrap for Metlink. Best way to get to the footy. In fact, the best way to do business around town. Trams, trains, and buses. Just go to metlinkmelbourne.com.au. Graham Bond, Australia's number one stats man who has just been doing this throughout your football slightly longer than me, Bondy, but it's great to have you here today. It is, has to be all Collingwood. What is the Europe cast stat sheet showing? Well, you? I think grand finals are won by the little things, Tony, not the big things, the little things. And today, Collingwood have done the little things beautifully. Uh, the spoils, 18 to 9. That's a huge difference in that area. The tackling, Collingwood far more aggressive. They've out-tackled the Saints, and the Saints are a top-tackling side. They've out-tackled them 52 to 35. They had the inside 50 win, 26 to 19, particularly in the first quarter. They won at 16 to 6. The effective disposals going forward in that attacking midfield. St Kilda unable to get the ball effectively inside 50. Just 20% effective in that first quarter when they went forward. Collingwood dominating in that area. Total possession. St Kilda are slightly ahead but that's uh, that's not in the context of this match because the stoppages is the big area. Around the clearances, there's been plenty of them. Collingwood winning those 19 to 11 and none better than Darren Jolly. He's had 22 hitouts. Lee Brown's had four, so 26 between the two big men. Ben McAvoy's had five hitouts. Justin Kaczynski's had the two. Third man up, Hayes and Rewall have had a couple of piece. Leading ball getters, Stephen Milne's been one. They need him to lift in the second half to have any chance at uh, winning this game. Um, I just, look, they, so many players just do it for uh, for St Kilda. Goddard, Del Sano's been a little bit better. It looks harder at the ball. Gwilt was brilliant rebounding at Fisher. But Collingwood, I just saw that stands a play on the wing right in front of us. I thought that was the game. In, in that little part where they had five or six tackles, Tony Leonard was calling it. I just saw it now, boys. That is the issue with this game. They are totally on with their uh, defensive skills. And to keep the ball in that area like they did, that is what Collingwood's done well all year. And I don't think St Kilda can cope. I don't know whether they can get a forward structure to kick enough goals, but they've got to get some control of Darren Jolly. I think it's up to Cozzy to do, you know, probably 70% with the other bloke, McAvoy, 30%. And don't throw him up forward because they haven't looked like marking the ball in there. I'd rather go with a smaller mobile forward line that might be better at ground level with Goddard and the Gilbert. Well, Tony, I uh, I wasn't all that keen on McAvoy playing. I just felt that yeah. uh, he was going to be too slow and lumbering around the ground. We saw Kaczynski last week in the second half do a really good job, and that meant that uh, they'd have an extra runner on the bench. Well, they've gone with the big boy in McAvoy, and uh, he has really struggled. That, to me, is the one area of the game where it's just the domination by Collingwood. Jolly's fantastic. Uh, the hit-outs all Collingwood's way. 
and uh, Bondi told us just before, 22 hit outs to Jolly, 5 to McAvoy, clearances 19 to Collingwood, 11 to St Kilda, and you're right, it's nothing new, St Kilda's bottom four or five players have always been uh, their Achilles heel, and uh, the decision making by Brett Peak when the game was in the balance about 10 minutes before half time was just dreadful, and uh, turned the ball over, Jolly intercepted, and they're able to get that McAffer goal, they do have to make changes, look they've kicked one goal, so you've got to have a, a mindset that we're going to kick three or four goals in this quarter, get ourselves back in the contest. So you've got to play players like Goddard and Del Santo and Gilbert in your forward structure because at the moment, Rewald is being controlled by Nathan Brown and uh, Kaczynski gave nothing up in the forward line. So they've got to get a bit of quality across that half forward line. I think the difference today, boys, has been the bombed entries. Collingwood haven't bombed it in. Only seven of their 26 entries have been bombed. Last week, that was all they did. They just blasted in high and it gave Gilton Fisher a chance to intercept. We haven't seen that today because they haven't had that luxury. The Pies have played it smarter. They've played braver with their run and carrying their overlap. And at times it hasn't worked. And at times they've made errors and they've had to have repeat stoppages and then the jolly influences come into the game. So that hasn't hasn't hurt them at all. They've scored two goals from stoppages, which is an absolute bonus for Collingwood. Mm. They don't operate on that. They look to score from turnover. And as we always say with them, once they, they nearly play for territory from stoppages, get into their forward half, press up and lock it in, and allow Maxwell to come off his man and Shaw to come off his man, and we'll play counter-attack post-turnover and try and score. One goal is a disaster. New plan. Well, kick off. Look, it's probably easy if you spray him, Tony. By the way, did you know that Seasol improves plant resistance? to lace wings and other sucking insects. So I actually have to keep this garden in shape? Now that sucks. Well, that's one thing you can keep in better shape, Tony. The best garden in the street. Don't forget the Seasol. Check out Tony Leonard's new garden on seasol.com.au. Throughout Australia, with thanks to your local Toyota dealer, Melbourne's own 3AW is football. Melbourne's own 3 out of you certainly is football. Big welcome to all of our relays right across Australia. And a special good afternoon to all of our friends in Perth through 6PR. And Adelaide through 5AA scores. Collingwood, the almost home, 6-5-41. That's Collingwood, St Kilda, 1-8-14 as the players break. Time to go to you, Scott Cummings, down there for Aquamax. Aussie made, Aussie design. Scott o is... Bru- no, I wouldn't say brutally warm, but this the conditions like this, not too many have had with them, certainly in Melbourne, right. over the last six, eight weeks. We haven't seen it for probably 12 weeks, yeah. in the sunshine, have we? Big news, Collingwood down to three men on the bench. Sam, uh, Ben Reid has not made a reappearance. Dane Beam, Sharon Wellingham and uh, Steel Sidebottom come to the bench. So Reid, a massive out for the Pies in, their, uh, in the defence. It's been holding Jeez. strong. St Kilda yet to break. We don't know who's on their bench yet. They really have they fined, didn't they, for, uh, for punctuality on last weekend? And they really are taking up the time and soaking up the clock at the moment. They're in the huddle at the moment. They just break now. And coming to the bench is Blake. It is also McWalter. It is also Baker and Eddie. Robert Eddie, who is channeling Greg Williams with a forearm cast I haven't seen in 10 years. I tell you what, Scotty, that is big, though. Because it's huge, Shorey. Yeah, Collingwood lose the rotation off the bench. And Reed. now they're going to have to go someone with Cosby, although they haven't looked like... Oh, well, McAvoy's going forward. McAvoy's going, going down to the square. And Kozinski is starting in the ruck. So they're, they're keeping the big fella down there as Gilbert stays forward as well. I reckon that plays into Collingwood's hands there. I would have rather gone a small, so one of their talls a bit worried at ground level. Uh, McAvoy doesn't look like marking the ball down there, but they've run with it with Kelsey in the uh, in the ruck, and I think that's a good move. So, as the players break, Collingwood will be going to the city end in the third quarter. 6-5-41 the Pies, St Kilda 1-8-14. Uh, uh, have a look at this. Both teams have only got three players in for the centre bounce. Uh, yeah. Now Goddard's gone in and Swan's chased him. At the very last minute, they both go in as you say. We're ready for the second half. Collingwood lead by 27 points. What are we going to get? A lot of ball down to this next 10 minutes to see how committed both sides are. Umpire Ray Chamberlain goes A over as Kaczynski got the clearance out of the middle to Rewalt. Rewalt marks. Thought he should have gone back. Gave it to Snyder. Snyder shot at the punt right end. He's He's hit the stick. What has he done, Wolsey? He's hit the stick and there's been three stick jobs by the Saints. He's sticked it and Snyder has missed what would have been a morale lifting goal and would have lifted the roof off the place that hasn't got one. Exactly. Collingwood by 26 points. Stockton. Alan Lego bringing the action in the third. Oh, Ray's called an intentional knockout. 
when there was a contest. All oh, right, don't get involved in the game, son. You've done free a good kick, job. Free kick to Collingwood, half back. That's the case. We thought it'd be just thrown in then, David. Rewalt has to take responsibility for his kick football club and go back and kick the goal. Yeah. Ball at half back. Goddard, front of the pack. She landed awkwardly. Trying to pick it up, Dempster. Tackle by mm. Blair. Ball just being knocked at half back by Dempster. Goes to Jones. Absolutely crunched that time. And that was Dane Swan putting the big tackle on. Yeah. Jason Graham, go hard. I'm don't reach. You, don't reach. Hand. Don't put one arm out. You're playing in the grand final, son. 6 5 41, the Pies. The Saints 1 9 15 BT. Minute and a half gone, third quarter. Free kick here to go to Collingwood. It'll go to Jolly against Kaczynski. They're about to ball it up and raise a Ray Chamberlain. Has lost a little bit of his composure. Gave it to Didak. Didak sends a ball in forward. Here they come. Dawes is down there. One on two. Could have been a free against Goddard. He was heading in the wrong direction. I thought he interfered with the marking contest. In goes Lee Brown, puts his head over the ball, comes out with it, gives it to Goldsack. Goldsack to Penelbury, Penelbury to ball. Round the corner ball, not 10 metres in the kick, so it won't be paid the mark. It spills loose to Lee Brown again. He got a little kick along the ground. It comes out towards Thomas, one-on-one -on -one with Fisher. Fisher over the line, will throw it in, Collingwood to the city end of the third quarter, and they lead it by 26 points. That's on the Stockdale Lego scoreboard. Two minutes gone, third quarter. Collingwood deep in the tech, and this finish him off this time. Cloak knocked to the corridor. Oh, road right by Mill. Now, did he get it high? Umpire said, yeah. Ball up. Well, if, if, oh, he's going to ball it up, OK. Yeah, ball up, no doubt. Cheer. So Lee Brown came in there hard. Result, 30 metres out. Collingwood into attack. Ball knocked away that time again by Jolly. Then he picked it up. Got a quick kick away to the forward pocket. It goes. Got a tireless. Works back at, in the back pocket. Then just drags it out of bounds. Oh, that was deliberate. Oh, and got a break then, I reckon, BT. Hey, Big listen, got that up. first clearance of the game. Rewalt not going back and kicking that set shot. That, that's got to hurt you. The captain's got to do that. Boundary throw in deep for Collingwood. If uh, Saints don't get up and don't get themselves into the contest in this third quarter, look back to that first 30 seconds. Have a look on the wing. You've got McAvoy with uh, Maxwell and Heath oh. Shaw around him. Uh, don't like that. Oh, it's ugly. That's a three on two. That's what they're saying, the boys. Maxwell, Shaw and Brown against Rewalt and big boy McAvoy. Good luck, Nick. As they have a ball up, 20 out from Collingwood City end goal. Jolly doing the ruck work. Continues on his brilliant first half. The ball ricochets off the chest to Goddard. Goddard got the handball away to Cosy. Snyder was there. The Collingwood barrage of tackles continues. Blair got it to Thomas from the boundary line. Thomas shot at goal. And a minor score in the end. 6-6, 42. Collingwood St. Kilda, 1-9-15 on the Stockdale and they go score. As it was at half time, 27 points in favour of the Pies as Rob Wilk goes short on the kick in he goes to Fisher back towards Quill closer to full back and now has to kick basically to a contest at half back no man just to present and goes short Dempster has it in the back pocket for St Kilda he's got to kick down the line the cause he's got Didak on him just kick down the line it's low scoring game 42 to 15 in favour of Collingwood foregone third quarter Kaczynski oh. at half back ball knocked forward Pendlebury Rose again at full forward for Collingwood the ball spills front of the pack picked up by Hayes beat one gave it to Zach Dawson his handball knocked down by Dawson for a goal Game today. I tell you who's come to fruition, the Collingwood supporters. Oh, of course we have got. Have they ever. Incredible atmosphere right from about 12 o'clock today at this venue. Collingwood by 33 points. After Rewald had a set shot 48 metres out directly in front that he did not take. Preferred the handball. Jolly out of the middle again got the tap. He is heading Norm Smith bound. If he keeps this up, Darren Jolly. And we'll have a stack here and another ball up, slightly favouring the Collingwood end of the ground. Umpire puts it on the turf, Kaczynski doing the ruck work, Jolly got the knockout to Wellingham, he was nailed by Farron Ray, Collingwood soccer off the ground, a centre forward, Dawes a deft little tap to Didak, oh. Didak squeezed it out the side door to the sack, Gold sack didn't know where to go, he got it to side bottom, fronts the goals, 40 metres out, in the square, Mark me taken here, couldn't get their cloak, Del Sando did well along with Goddard to beat the bigger man. And a minor score in the end. A 34-point Collingwood lead on the Stockdale on the go scoreboard. Goddard to bring it back in. St Kilda have to conjure up some absolute magic. Six minutes gone, third quarter. They don't look in it today. 
Goddard kicks it close to the boundary line at halfback. Kaczynski flies. Just dragged O'Brien to the ground in the marking contest. Lots of fortune for the Saints. Back of the pack. Fisher picks it up. Goes along members wing. Getting back though. Nathan Brown beats him. What a lovely mark in front of Rewald. Well he beat Rewald one on one. Rewald hasn't had a great game that is for sure. It's going to take his now best half of football probably ever to get Saints home from here. Johnson at half back got the handball received from Nathan Brown. Oh. A horrible lackadaisical kick from Johnson goes high in the air. No one's advantage. It's neutral territory on the northern wing. Graham got a little poke around of the pack comes back to Johnson. He gets another look at it. This time it's a horrible mung along the ground. Swan making ground on the ball. Tried to tap it on. Dawes has got hold of it. He was tackled. Then he went to ground and tried to knock it out. Went and got it. Got hard. Did really one hand with one hand pin. Ball dropped though. Picked up in the end by Beams. He sends a ball to McCaffer. Couldn't hold the mark. Off hands. Quilt did it well. He was wrapped up in the swan tackle. Oh. Players converge. The colony and pulverisation of tackles continues. And a ball up 25 metres out from Collingwood's goal. And Tony Shaw in the back row clapping the pressure put on by the Magpies. And I do not blame him. Lee Brown was the one who put on that ripper tackle at the end. Collingwood by 34 points and it's only 20 out from the Collingwood goal. Hayes, third man up. the Road by Wellingham outside of the beat for a goal. Wellingham pounces. Good guys, goal of the day for Samsung. The best player in the league from having an impact. Third man up there, Brian. If your man go, it goes in the air, you must crumb the ball. That's exactly what happened. Hayes yeah. goes third man up. Taps 40 points opponent. up, boys. There's plenty of this quarter left. 15 yep. minutes. They only have to get back 20 in this quarter, yep. 20 in the next, and it's a tied ball game. This oh. is not beyond the Saints yet, but Collingwood are playing well. They got the clearance out of the middle. Swan gathers the ball, took a bounce. Handball inside to side bottom. He won it on the inside, Blair. In the end, he got his own handball received. How do you do that? Snyder and Baker. Baker has a crack trying to drill a hole through the defence. Couldn't get Get it done. Goddard went hard at the ball. Dawes got him in the tackle. And eventually the Saints handball goes straight to Jolly. Gave a little one off there. And Goldsack is pinned in the hits. tackle by Gilbert. Ball well, it up, attacking 50 for the Pies. The Wellingham goal from the ruck stoppage. Uh, Graham, his opponent, just didn't run with him. Just let him go through. Ball bounce on the attacking 50. Collingwood into attack. City and lead by 40 points. Halfback Ray. The ball bounced in his lap. Goes out wide. O'Brien and Peak, the foot race is on. Bounce favours O'Brien, tackle thrown to the ground. Free kick O'Brien, didn't have the football. Guess who? And Harry O gets it. He's got it, and guess what? Ben Reed's back, and he looks like he may get up and play again. So Harry O'Brien, 70 metres out of drilling high ball into the Collingwood forward line. Beams off hand, Swan, Rhodes, goals! Collingwood by 46. even before they got to it because they knew Harry had win the one-on-one -on -one, which he did the noise is unbelievable <laughs> it's a 46 point lead to Collingwood soak it all in I hope you are right around Australia as Collingwood go for glory now ball yeah. out of the middle the bounce tackle going nowhere secondary bounce middle of the ground Gilbert's going back Tell you what, Luke Ball has been sensational, Luke Ball. 17 possessions at this stage, but his clearance work's been very good. It is 10, 11 minutes into the third quarter. Collingwood by 46 points. The tap goes to the wing, picked up by Montagna. Wide to half forward. Maxwell at the back, knocks away from Kaczynski. Shaw there as well. Knocks it 20, 25, 30 metres away from goal. Well done, he's Shaw. And the fans love it, Tony. The fans just love it. He belted that ball 20 metres. Every Collingwood effort is being applauded to the max. Need to run here the Saints need to take some risks run and carry try and create some score do something Stockdale Lego scoreboard Collingwood 61 St Kilda 15 boundary throw in Jolly went without the ball Jones picked uh, it up at the back gave it to Fisher got a bit of space Fisher goes oh. inside 50 with a searching kick it's only Milne to beat Harry O'Brien and Maxwell his helper Harry O'Brien and Milne go at it Harry won it got mid high did well in the tackle but he'll get a free Harry O'Brien Kaczynski copped him high in the last line he is a crude tackler Cosy. Harry O'Brien in the back pocket for Collingwood to stabilise things. Collingwood 9-7-61. Lead St Kilda. Can you believe it? 1-9. And we're at the 11-minute mark of the third quarter. And the pass of beauty finds Daisy Thomas at half-back. And again, Collingwood, will they go along the boundary line? They do. To the wing. Man in front, Lee Brown, has it knocked away. Lee Brown tries to do the roving. Gilbert picks up. Tackle by Tooby. Ball springs free to Lee Brown. Got it to Wellingham. Back to Lee Brown. And once again, Rob, Collingwood happy to knock it 10 metres forward along the boundary line. They are masters at the bash and crash, huh? Okay, well, Jared Wellingham 
identified last week. He said he thought the game got to him. He has been brilliant today. He is a tough nut, this kid. Graham, how many for Europe car, Sherrod Wellingham? He's had 14 disposals. On the wing, the tap away McAvoy. But it's two Collingwood players pouncing. Well, the Ben Johnson handball was knocked back by Goddard. Packer players form. It's still on the members' wing as the umpire comes in, separates the boys. 9-7-60 won the pies. Saints 1-9-15, Stockdale Lego scoreboard. See, that's the difference. It didn't work there. The handball didn't get through. But they're looking to run and carry and overlap the pies. The, the Saints are trying to do it by foot. Yeah, it's free a free kick. kick to Dane Swan. They are, they are oh. loose. Losing their cool St Kilda. Have a look at this. Hayes. Ben Reid can't wait to get back on the ground. Maxwell will run and receive the kick wide. Goes over the head of Cloak. Didak keeps it rolling forward. He kept it alive brilliantly on the northern side. Eventually it goes out of bounds, but not before he gained 30 metres. And will now throw it in 40 out from Collingwood's goal. Reid back on. Yep, he comes back on, Scotty. So the good news for Pie fans, they're back to their normal rotation. And always got an extra man in defence, the Magpies. Saints got no hope with this 46 setup. points. That's Rob Walls on 3LW, the knockdown forward to Thomas, got it to Swan, kicked the last goal, kicked this one out on the full from a difficult angle, and <laughs> Wilt will get the free kick in the back pocket. So. He's uh, coming back into the game, Swan, yeah. he only had seven touches in the first half, much better third quarter. Yeah, he's already had four this quarter and a couple of tackles. Wilt in the back pocket. An absolute miracle required now for the Saints. Kicks to half-back wing. Four players fly. Nathan Brown of Collingwood knocked it forward 20 metres. To Dida, can he keep it alive? Not able to. Just hurried out of bounds. Right on the tacking 50 for Collingwood by Jones on the member side. As Jones just gives him a little oh. playful tap to the cheek. There are too many small forwards and also on ball has got Gee. negating roles. They've just got to release everybody now. The Saints. Colling there's Collingwood by 46 points at half-back. And, and uh, the rampaging Ray saw the blue. And he's going to go to Collingwood. Free and kick to Collingwood here. 40 oh, metres out. Done and dusted the Saints. Done 40 metres out. It was off the play. About eight players on top of each other. Rampaging Ray saw Collingwood free in the middle of it. It'll go to Beams, I think. You've got to bring it back, Saints. Yeah. This is the first time they look like running. And, and they, they are. They've reversed it. And the ball's gone through the middle as Graham gets the handball away. This is the Saints' best chance, BT. As Revolt goes forward and the pass goes to Kaczynski. What happened there? 30, this is down there, McBurney. 30 players stopped. There had to have been a reversal because Ray certainly pointed to a Collingwood free. Well, and the result is every player stopped, swooped on by St Kilda, and it's been moved up to Kaczynski, dead in front, 30 metres out. Look, they trail by 46 points, St Kilda. 15 minutes into the third quarter, they've only kicked a goal. Surely Cosy delivers from here. On its way. Got it. He's got it. 2-9-21, St Kilda, trail by 40 points. Collingwood 9 7 Well, they, it's forced us and killed it to play Goddard as loose man in defence. As good as he is, they're 40 points behind, 15 minutes into a third quarter. They've got to be thinking uh, scoring, not saving. 40 points, if they can, even they get it back to 20, 24, 25 points, they'd give themselves some show, I reckon. So certainly not done uh, by any means here at the moment, but it is all pointing to a Collingwood victory. As the ball goes to centre-half forward, getting on the end of it was Dawson. Gave it to Blake. Oh. His kick smothered by Dynamo. Oh. Didak picks up the loose ball, right foot around the corner, bending back, what a remarkable goal, <laughs> the goal of the game, Ellen Didak at a critical stage has kicked the good guys goal of the game, unbelievable for Samsung. Shows the forward pressure that Collingwood are putting on the Saints. Oldhouse has loaded this up perfectly. He's pushed Didak forward. They've got non-kickers in their back line now. The Saints all head-to-head -head locked up with matchups. They can't get the ball out of there. Surely another tap. What a wonderful Whoa. game he's gone. Goes towards Thomas. Thomas on the wing through the Toyota logo. Wide to half forward. Left through the hands of Dawes. It's 30 out close to the boundary line. Collingwood into attack again. Blake keeps it alive. From one back pocket to the other. North to southern side where the mark's taken by Peak. Peak plays on immediately from the defensive 50 goes out wide but look at this he's kicked it straight to Shaw he advances a lovely attempt at Mark not paid umpire said he didn't juggle it to the ground McWalter arrives and makes him earn it Pies fans Pies fans not happy did he mark it? no Goddard yeah. forward 2 now boys 10-7 67 Collingwood St Kilda 2-9-21
And that's at the 17 minute mark of this third quarter. Off hands, Del Sano was able to avoid the tackle. Now kicks to half forward without direction. Up goes Brown, couldn't hold the mark. But Ben Johnson is able to get it, and that's a free kick to Brown. Should have paid advantage. I'm not sure why the little man Ray Chamberlain with a powerful whistle didn't. I don't think the Pies wanted it anyway, BT. Yeah. They just want to slow it down now, get a bit of possession footy. Ben Reed's doing exactly that across half back, Shorey. And he goes wide, so look, Collingwood again just taking their time, moving it on. And the mark out there is taken by Wellingham. So, uh, in fact, it is Pendlebury. Pendlebury at half back to Jolly. Just beyond him, but Daisy Thomas stays down. Rosen off the pack. Oh. Handballs over to his opponent's head. Then he took it, but he's kicked the left foot under pressure. Only to centre half back. Gilbert tried to play on. At centre half back again, they're under awful pressure. Graham to Revolt. Revolt ducked his head. Tackled by Tuvi. What does the, the umpire say? He allows play to continue. 45 out from the Collingwood okay. goal. Revolt's in the defensive 50 for St Kilda. You know what that means? Can't win. Game over. Stopped our Lego scoreboard. Collingwood 10 7. 67 by 46 over the Saints. 2 9 21, 19 gone, third quarter. Fish are coming back from the medical room. Gee, they got the biggest uh, trophy of all then. Rewalt, they hunted him in the back line and they surrounded him. They gang tackled him. Fisher, Scotty, comes back onto the bench. What do you think? Well, he's just having a bit of a walk now. He, uh, he looks as flat as a tack, not just from a side that's eight goals down, but uh, he's just trying to get into a bit of a job now. He looked like he did that hamstring in that fight that took place yeah. as well. Got thrown around a little yeah. bit, but he's just doing some drop throughs now. Ball spills to Penbury. He gathers the ball. 40 out near the boundary line. Poor kick, but he was under enormous pressure. Out of bounds on the full. 67-21 on the Stockdale scoreboard. David King, Collingwood lead. Well, I like the rewind move because they had the manufacturer to something. Get they, the need, ground, yeah. they need to ensure they're going to have some run and carry through the middle of the ground. At least if the big boy gets it, he can get and explode through the wings because they don't look like getting inside 50 at the moment. Without a shadow of a doubt, he's got a slight hamstring strain. Fisher saying to the, do- the guys on the bench, it doesn't matter. Just get me back on. So the ball has been moved to the middle of the ground. Is this a chance for the Saints? The Goddard kick toward full forward. Montagna and Ben Johnson go. It takes a bit of a leg break. Oh. Goes to the boundary line. Ben Johnson. Great play. Got it to Brown. Brown goes back to Ben Johnson. They're holding firm the Collingwood defence. Peak the handball to McWalter against the boundary line. Wants to free up a man into the corridor. Lenny Hayes picks it up from the outside of the right boot. Oh, that is a lovely goal, Lenny Hayes. Super goal by Lenny. Got to go with a good guy's goal of the day for Samsung. As long as he got the ball through the sticks. Scotty, did Rewalt go straight for the phone? Or yeah, not? yeah, came off straight off the ground and straight for the phone. He's just uh, now, sitting there now. I reckon chat. that was deliberate. I reckon he's taken himself off the ground to speak to the coach. To oh, say, yeah. now listen, we're going to do something. Get here. me what up the do? ground. Get yeah. me up the ground or let me run around after the centre bounce is done. Throw McAvoy either off the ground or to the square. He didn't speak to anyone else. He's still speaking on the phone now, Rewalt, to the coach. It's almost as if to say, OK, I'll sacrifice a minute or two, but we've got to get this structure right. His ball with his head over it. Got it to hand. Wellingham. Look at the handball give to Swan. A beautiful kick to Cloak. Now Cloak has marked 30 metres out, right where he was practising from before the game at the city end on the north side. This is the difference. I know we touched on it at the start of the quarter. Cloak marks the ball. He says, OK, I now have to take responsibility to kick the goal for my team. Rewalt didn't do that. That's the difference. This guy is an ordinary kick, but he still makes a correct decision. This Travis is just Cloak. his fifth disposal, Travis Cloak. Gee, it was a nice kick by Swan to hit him up. He pulled the kick, it saw was. him lead into the pocket and just pulled the kick. Beautiful composure. As a result, Cloak lines up 35 out and he kicks the ball to the right hand side and it's a minor score. So 10 8 68, St Kilda 3 9 27. And that's on the Stockdale and Lego scoreboard. We've got hard to bring it back into play. You mentioned that forward pressure of Collingwood. In their forward half, They've laid 53 tackles. That is amazing. Saints at the other end, the boys have been there, they've only laid 12. No marking about Goddard. Kick to himself, kick to the middle of the ground. Oh. Lovely Mark McAvoy in the pack, takes it. Now has to get rid of it quickly. Del Santo screams for it. He was free and still is free, Del Santo. Through the middle of the ground he goes. To half forward left at the punt road end. 55 out, mark taken by McWalter. Well, oh. Gilbert should just keep running. I don't know that he wanted it. Oh. As Gilbert forces McWalter to kick defensively. Coming from the side, goal sack knocked it down. Picked up though by Hayes, swooped on it. He's in the middle of the ground, can go wide. Can P- uh, Baker pick it up, knocks it forward. Tries to get it in the direction of McAvoy. Each is knocked off the ball by Heath Shaw. Handball missed that time, trying to find Burns. Picked up by Lenny Hayes, goes to Schneider. Now a chance for the Saints to build from the wing through Goddard. They recover it, Goddard around the corner, difficult kick. A high hoisting ball to Milne who bangs into the back of Beams. At the back was Peak. 
couldn't smother the ball. Milne had another crack, but in the meantime, Reed has arrived and will have a ball up deep in St Kilda's attack zone here. They trail by 41 points for Saints, 22 minutes in the third. Milne hasn't had a kick yet, boys. Has not had no, one not kick one for kick. the game. Gee. Two handball. Well, I reckon he's got to go up the ground and see if he can do it the other way, running towards goal instead of just sniffing around goal. Europe car stats there coming from Graham Bond. The ball from the stoppage comes to the defensive goal square for Collingwood, picked up by Thomas. He end over ends one along the ground because only Farron Ray was there. Ray gathers the ball now. 55 out and nursing kick. Thomas desperation. Cut it off. It spills to McCaffer. He bullets his way through. Sends the ball to the wing. Here's Zach Dawson. Went out and half-hearted. Dawson said, get out of the way. I'm bigger, meaner and tougher. Sent the handball inside the penalty. Wonderful Collingwood play. Pendlebury's kick the side bottom has been marked. And side bottom is marked 25 metres out directly in front. Dale Thomas, take a bow. He has become a finals player. He's won his reputation during this final series. Listen to that. He's having a break. Have a listen. Well done, son. Have a listen to the applause from Dale Thomas. As side got him, goes back in preparation for the kick. Remarkable play from a young man. And side bottom, you would almost think to make it really difficult with just a few minutes remaining, five minutes remaining in this third quarter. Directly in front, didn't get it well, but got it good enough. Side bottom kicks the goal. Collingwood by a whopping 47 points on the Stock Island Lego scoreboard. St Kilda 2 in this third two. Rewalt back out on the ground. Sam Fisher still bleeding, saying, just put me out there, it's gone, but what can I do? So, 47 points, closing in on three-quarter time. Collingwood lead, are they home? I reckon they are. But Henry Hayes, too slow, tackled. Collingwood just wanted so much at the moment, and the swan tackle rewarded. Can come wide, Pendlebury takes it, members wing. He's happy just to do a little circle, grab the ball, defensive handball, doing it beautifully. Goes to Reed, wide to the wing, and leading up, taking the mark, is McCaffrey for Collingwood. Been two today, this kid. Still doesn't look great, Reed, as he just kicked that ball, looked a little ginger. Doesn't matter, though. Turvey off hands, handball straight to Snyder. Snyder grabs possession, got the handball away, but it was to Eddie, who was under enormous pressure. And the turnover again as McCaffer cleans up the penalty. Penalty a high hoisting ball to half forward. Goddard flies, almost took another free screamer. Kick. But a, a free kick against Quill for a hold will go to Collingwood's doors. He's 55 metres out near the boundary line. Robert Eddy. <laughs> So over at the contest. I know, I know. Their bottom four or five. Just the, just the three disposals to Eddie. Their bottom you guys, four or five are killing him. Guys might have been a bit harsh here. He did cut one right in the head, in the jaw, which sort of knocked him over It's a grand final, bit. Scotty. That's Doors is a long way out. 55 metres out. Doesn't go for goal. Puts it to the top of the square in the dangerous spot. Oh. And a leaping attempt at mark there by Cozzy. Wish he could do that at the other end. Yeah, exactly. He marks in the last line of defence. And he's going to come out towards the members half back. Oh. No, he's changed his mind a couple of times goes towards the wing now Eddie into the back of Maxwell three on two calling with the numbers follow the ball they win it as McCaffer goes in towards Didac half forward he knocks to center half forward getting back though peak of St Kilda at half back to Del Santo the Del Santo pass to the wing it's going to be effective and the mark taken by Eddie right in front of the 6PR 5AA 3RW commentary box with Collingwood leading by 47 points turns around and hammers it Montagna couldn't get it because of the sun that bounced out of the hands uh -oh. of Brown to Rewald over the top of Montagna run down by Harry O'Brien and Brown was able to pick up the remnants of that and kick a short ball out to Shaw. Shaw goes even shorter and finds side bottom on the southern half-back flank. Much to the delight of Collingwood supporters, that run down from Harry. Side bottom, a chipping little ball, is presenting up his swan. They had a quiet first part of the game, uh, Swan. What's he had now, Bobby? He's had a great quarter. That's uh, position seven for this quarter for Dane Swan. OK, kicks sideways and finds Shaw. And uh, we're getting near the three-quarter time break. Three and a quarter minutes remaining here. It's a 47-point Collingwood lead at the moment. They have control and possession at the half-back, and they're happy to soak up a couple of minutes here. Kick goes back to Shaw, who's now very much at the punt road, last line of defence. He says, come on, boys, get in front of the ball. So Shaw hammers it down the southern half-back flank. A high ball up they fly. Couldn't win it in the air, Brown, but he recovered his own ball brilliantly. Got the handball off to Swan. He gives it to the left-footed Johnson, who hammers one along the boundary line, and they stick to their plan. Kept it a live ball, Farron Ray over the line. Southern wing, neutral territory, throw it in. Collingwood by 47. And that's on the Stockdale Lego scoreboard. 29 minutes gone in the third quarter. So Kaczynski and Lee Brown go at it. 
Hayes lurks. Lee Brown wins it, taps it, goes to the boundary line. Booms, happy to let it run out of bounds from there. Throw it in again. Bondi, some of the other big numbers as we're at the 29-minute mark, third quarter. Well, for Scotty Pendlebury up to 21 disposals, 11 tackles. Dane Swan, 15 and 10 tackles. Dale Thomas, 19. Also, a couple of contested possessions and two clearances. Lee Brown, the tap. Ball to clearance to half forward he goes. Cloak tackled by Dawson, had to handball it away, but running to receive Pendlebury of Collingwood kicks it wide to half forward. Jolly the target, ball beats into the boundary line, and it's inside attacking 50 yet again. Half forward left 45 around from the Collingwood goal at the city end. It's the Pies by 47 on the Stockdale Lego scoreboard. 2.18 remaining in this third quarter. Boundary throw it in there forward 50. Collingwood Jolly did well to get two hands in on it, back. but infringed what? and gave away the free kick. I'd like to see St Kilda try something with their forward line. Maybe put three goals in the goal square. See if you can just draw and drag some Collingwood defenders back and see if you can open up some space through that half forward line. So don't let it play as it is currently being played. Yeah, it's being, it's too easy for Collingwood to counter attack at the moment. Right, so Gwilder in the back pocket sends it down the northern side in front of our commentary position. Blake takes a nice mark falling backwards on the half back line but you get the feeling the Saints just a little tired at the moment. Yep. Don't know whether they can muster up the energy required. Farron Ray from one point of the square at half back to Rewald at centre half forward off hands beautifully handball comes to Cozzi who looked like he had lead in his leg kick. gave it to Milne Milne kicks it inside 50 no one home it'll go over the line and out of bounds deep with a minute 33 remaining in the third quarter Collingwood by 47 I tell you what the Warriors of St Kilda are feeling the pinch no doubt Lenny Hayes Goddard they look like they're not covering the ground just that it took a lot out of them last week maybe even the hot afternoon this afternoon take a bit out of them can they grab one here and give themselves a fluke as chance for the throw in Hayes tackle without it Pendle dispossessed forward pocket for St Kilda the revolt kick was cut off that oh. time by Jolly who kicks it high in the air only goes about 15 metres so still inside attacking 50 for the Saints and coming through Gilbert with the sit for St Kilda has marked Walsey 40 out slight angle he kicked three behinds in the second quarter uh, tone he's played in the back line for this third term he, uh, he he deserves the goal and this would be the easiest one because his three behinds in the second quarter were all on the run with someone chasing him hard they trail by 40 seven points St Kilda Gilbert 40 maybe 35 out slide angle to the punt road in goes onto the boot dropped it nicely and he snuck it in so that's their fourth goal of the afternoon St Kilda at the 31 minute mark of the third quarter 49-33 when they kick that goal <laughs> and he is dirty as dirty as you'll ever see yeah. relax mate just it's going to happen it's going to happen it is you're in control can't Four. do any more from the coach's box Back in the middle of the ground we go. Magnificent crowd in here today, minus a few in the top of the Ponsford stand. Big boy McAvoy went up, hasn't had a great game. Penelby was able to get on the end of it, kicked it straight though to St Kilda. Hayes now sends the ball inside 50 with a wobbly old punt. Goes towards Rewalt, leads his man Brown to the ball. Uh, but Brown got good. the nice bounce. Handball away, it was really well done to Reed. And now Reed goes out wide to Maxwell. Maxwell with a lucky kick uh, to Jolly, it was meant for sure. And Jolly takes the mark at half back so he can gobble up some clock here. Darren Jolly on the half back line. Would have liked to have seen Peak gobble up Jolly. Collingwood run, run it. Collingwood runner straight out there saying just pull it up, pull it up. Yeah, right near the boundary. The Collingwood runner is within two metres of you, Scotty, and three metres of Maxwell. And Maxwell says to the runner, How long? He says, Mate, you've got about 10 seconds. So kick it down the line. And Maxwell does from half back. It's been an exhilarating quarter. Collingwood have kicked five goals to St Kilda's three in the third quarter. And they lead it by 41 points. 11874 Collingwood, St Kilda 4933. The Saints' most productive quarter, but at the same time, it was the Pies' most productive quarter. Mick Malthouse calls the boys in. The Saints, can they conjure something? And what about the Pies? David King, where to from here? Well, the Pies has just been fed. Drive into spring with Europe Car with rental discounts of up to 15% and all-inclusive packages starting from $59 a day. Europe Car puts you behind the wheel for less. Conditions apply. See the specials page at europecar.com.au or call 13 13 90. Footy highlights brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. The ball spills front of the pack, picked up by Hayes. Beat one, gave it to Zach Dawson. His handball knocked down by Dawson for a goal. Road by Wellingham outside of the boot for a goal. delivers from here. He's got it. Dynak picks up the loose ball. Right foot around the corner. Bending back. What a remarkable goal. The goal of the game. Yeah, it 
it was from uh, Collingwood's uh, Alan Didak. 47 was the high in, the, in that quarter. It is currently 41 points in favour of Collingwood at three-quarter time. 11.874 to second quarter, 4.933. Bond to Europe, Carstats. Well, the game's been played on Collingwood's terms. In their forward half, they've had 132 disposals. At the other end of the ground, St Kilda in their forward half, 76 disposals. Almost twice as many possessions in that Collingwood forward half. The Collingwood forwards, they've laid 55 tackles. The St Kilda forwards, the ball hasn't been down there, just the 18 tackles. In the defensive half, the Saints have had it 176 times. So you can see it's been all played centre forward for Collingwood. Consequently, 19 scored shots to 13. Have a look at this. St Kilda are out in their positions waiting to go. Mick Malthouse has decided to get yeah. the boys in. Now, Shorey, this speech is surely about the moment, isn't I, I'm it? He would be saying, I'm going to watch you blokes in this quarter. He's got yeah. another year of coaching next year. He's going to say, I want to see how far you want to take this. This game, he wouldn't be thinking this is done and dusted. No. I want to win this quarter. I want your head over the ball again and play to our structures. No one goes outside of it. No Lear rise and get it done. Wolsey, what do you reckon, mate? Well, Nick's had his say, and uh, Nick Maxwell now has his say. That'll cost Collingwood a few thousand dollars. They couldn't care less because they're going to make millions uh, when they win this game. And I tell you what, uh, they've done it comprehensively. And the thing about them, they're three years younger than the St Kilda team. So uh, you, we know the Baby Bombers won a premiership. You thought this is the start of the golden era. There are no guarantees, but there's every chance this Collingwood team that will win the premiership today is going to be in more grand finals. No doubt. So half an hour or so left for Collingwood. They lead by 41 points, 11.874, St Kilda 4.933. Ball raised a lot. Half an hour of football left in season 2010. Play underway. Jolly magnificent. Goes again. Gets the tap away. Ball falls to the middle of the ground. Off the deck by Pendlebury. Ricochets back to Tuvi. Got room to move. Kick to centre half forward. Dawes goes at it with Quill. Bounce favours at half back. Gilbert through one for two. Didn't take the ball with him. Side bottom swoop. Goes back to the middle of the ground and Jolly's got the football. He has it centre half forward. He may well be a Norm Smith contender. Handballs off to the left foot of Johnson. Hammers it home with an ugly ball inside 50. Because he got too far under it. Zach has to tidy it up. Gives the handball to Clint Jones. Runs across the defensive oh. square. Look at uh, Thomas. Not running at him. Trying to corral him. They keep the pressure oh. on and eventually they turn it over. Tooby marks on 50. Plays on. Turns around the corner. Johnson will get it and go. No, he won't. 55 metres out on a 45 degree angle. Too far even for Benny. A goal for Collingwood here would make it at a certainty. The kick goes deep and Dawes is marked. 25 metres out on a very acute angle. Southern side at the punt road end. Well drilled, well drilled. You'd know every time Collingwood would go to that square, they don't mind having a shot from here. They just kick a ball there and St Kilda didn't identify that then. Dawes will line up to kick the goal here. He already has one. He's 25 metres out. He starts his approach from the boundary line. He'll end about three metres inside it. A big kick in this game. To nail it, I reckon, for the Pies. To extend the margin to 47. Doors at the punt road end. Listen to it. Have a listen to it. Doors has got a couple. Then Doors went back, took his time, took his time, split the middle, and the Collingwood faithful, they know it's theirs now. Tony Shaw, what are you feeling at the moment? Well, there's some stories here. Jolly, first ruckman Collingwood's had in probably 20 years. Ball from St Kilda, and I'm thinking of he's sure at the moment. Good boy. Out of the middle, though. Saints win it. Scrambly kick from Jones. Goes to half forward. Eludes all players. Picked up by McWalder. Kick charge down by O'Brien. Fell to Maxwell. Gave it back to O'Brien at half back. In and out of traffic this time. Tackled as he kicked it. Goes wide. Picked up by Del Santo, though. It's 80 Collingwood. 33 St Kilda. RACB Business Insurance bringing you the final quarter. We're three minutes into it. And going wide. And the mark taken there, it's peak. Got to play it on and kick to the top of the square. And that's what he's going to do, Tone. A bit slow, though. He gets to fall forward, getting back there. Paul knocked away. Well done by Brown. And this bloke's got it again. He's been wonderful, Jolly. And what about this broke Pendlebury? He's in the hunt as well. A couple of possessions there will tidy his stat sheet up very, very nicely. He would be a leader in the Norm Smith. As uh, one of them already pointed out, Shorey another, of course. Plenty of opportunities out there. Darren Jolly another. All involved in that play. 
Short kick by Dawes finds Pendlebury and the run a few seconds off the clock here as Pendlebury on the north side kicks backwards to Johnson. BT, I want to mention Nathan Brown too. His job on Revolt, you stop the best player in the comp, you've got to be looked at, I would think. Well, he's done it yep. two weeks in a row. He is a defender, they don't look at that normally, but gee. Could he win it? Could he win the He should, he medal? should. He, he's a chance, I would put him with Jolly as the two influential players on this ground. Short kick to Swan didn't quite work. Swan's got time to redeem himself. Handball's off to Johnson, who goes straight down the northern oh. wing. Swappy kick to Heathsaw. So all those in contention are getting a touch to the ball at the moment. Heathsaw goes inside 50 to Didac. Punched away from him there by Dempster. Did well, Wellingham. Well, put his head over it. Got it to Didac. Already kicked two goals in the game, Didac. Handball to Dawson. Dawson was able to uh, get the handball oh. away to Montagna. Around the corner, but Shaw's going to mark on the wing. He, he takes it on the members. Wing man through there. Are just sticking to it absolutely religiously Shorey goes to Luke Ball that's where the crowd cut goes up the Collingwood the former Saint now Collingwood player to the forward pocket Dawes traps it handball to Daisy Thomas beat one beat two ran it along the ground for a goal this is the time Collingwood to rejoice suck it all in it's wonderful as Collingwood now 13 8 86 a whopping 53 over St Kilda 4933 RACB Business Insurance scoreboard. Tony Shaw tells again. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, St Kilda, they have been in seven and we're seeing a picture of Eddie Maguire. He's crying. Well, he should cry. You know why? He took this club over when we were broke. We were under bo at the bottom ladder and I was part of that as a coach. But he allowed people their dignity and what he's done, he's brought to this club sponsors who at the moment are paying close to eight eight million dollars a year it's just been sensational sure and he's what about, on his heart what about you what are you feeling right now as the reigning uh, premiership captain what is, honestly what's your emotion this has been too long coming and these supporters one premiership in 50 years to get it here I, i've got to say i'm a bit biased at the moment i'm looking at my nephew heat well, I know just, what his, fa his father went through, five losing grand finals. Yeah. At least it's a bit of payback. Well, he just uh, got good it on again. you, Shorey. Yeah. Enjoy it. Absolutely. He saw just got it again there. And as Shorey says, in contention for the Norm Smith medal. Here's Lenny Hayes on the northern wing. A chipping little ball found Goddard. Goddard with a handball inside, but the thing's gone out. As Del Sano launches from 55 out. It's a good-looking kick for the Saints, and it bounces nicely. It's a goal to St Kilda. Their fifth of the game, 5-9-39. Trail Could be fourth or fifth talented of the 16. Hey, Bulldogs have got a better list. Geelong's got a yeah. better list. You've got, you've got a question too, like the captain hasn't performed on the day. Stevie Milne has had that pressure and that stigma of not performing on the big day a lot of times in his career. Hasn't performed. So there's some other issues there too. Goddard, wonderful again. Won it from the middle. Gave the handball to Del Sano, oh, but he's right. kicked Miss Harry O'Brien. Great game. 13886 Collingwood, 5939 the Saints, RACB Business Insurance Scoreboard. And the gold jacket goes on Joffa. He is going nuts down there in the Collingwood Cheer Squad. There's more police there, more police there than anywhere else in Victoria today. Thomas went to Pendlebury to Didac all along the outer wing. Tempo precision play as Didac to Swan. Every possession being cheered. Well, the Collingwood fans are cheering their heroes. It's a chance for them as they play this slow possession football. Cheer, Swan, cheer, Didac, cheer, Thomas. All of them deserve cheers. As Swan went back to Didac, 47 points the margin. Eight minutes gone, final quarter. Collingwood can taste it, they can smell it, and they're just about to touch it in 20 minutes' time as the ball knocks out of bounds. Yeah, he'll be unbearable, Joffa. Oh, no. Um, I'm yeah. not even going to mention him. No. Nah. The ball's on the wing on the southern stand side he, while a man quite, behaves quite, like a kid. He's quite intelligent man, BT. That's the problem. It's, it's just game day. It's a great right. disguise. <laughs> he's got a problem. It's game day disguise. He's like a hell's angel. He's You're trying to tell me he's a lawyer. <laughs> um, ball up on centre wing here at the moment. 13-8-86, eh? Collingwood, St Kilda, 5-9-39. They're celebrating already, uh, Collingwood fans. It won't be long before the St Kilda fans start to walk the aisles and I'll get the send-off from the Collingwood fans who are thoroughly enjoying a comfortable lead at the moment. At the, well, at the uh, eight-minute mark, 47 points they lead by the Pies. One of the Toyota service advantage logo out there on the far side. And Toyota's contribution to this replay match has been significant in connecting with grassroots as well as we'll throw it in again. Still in neutral territory, a shot of Reese Shaw and 
and um, his uh, father, Ray Shaw. I think Reese is having a beer already, but yep. he's just uh, taking a sip out of one. Might have been the tenth one out the half time. Ray Shaw, not all that happy yet. Hasn't got the smile yet, but he will when his son receives the Premiership Medallion and perhaps even an Orm Smith medal as the ball goes down towards Collingwood's attacking or end of the ground. So the line out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a nice way to win a Premiership, isn't it? Yeah. It is a nice way. You've got enjoy 14 it. minutes to go, yeah. and you can just enjoy the whole thing. Soak it in. Win the flag. The shore wins the Norm Smith. It's fitting, isn't it? Oh. 80, Collingwood 86 and kill to 39. Brown knocks it in. Rove by Wellingham against the boundary line. Tries to Banana. One from the hit. Oh. Came in a real flight. To one behind. <laughs> Haven't the kids been good, Tony? Yeah. Like Wellingham, you know, failed last week. Even Beams has just done his strong play over the Rick. ball. And McCaffer, I thought, has been brilliant. Yeah, so, side bottom good. From those who were quiet last week, Wellingham's had the biggest, the, yes. the most at quantum leap. 39.87 BT Collingwood. St Kilda 5.939. RACB business insurance scoreboard. 10 gone final quarter. Ball in the middle of the ground. And Collingwood again about to break. They are indeed as they uh, get the uh, kick backwards this time to Maxwell. Maxwell takes the mark and sends it to centre back to Nathan Brown. He gets a big cheer because he's done an enormous job as on the got. most talented big man in the game in Nick Rewalt. What are Nick Rewalt's uh, stats there, Bonnie, on the Europe Cup? He's had just the four marks and 14 disposals, kick one point. Nathan Brown, the boys reckon he's in contention for this North Smith. And this man here, Thomas Marks on the wing. I reckon he's been the player of the finals for Collingwood BT, yep. Dale Thomas. He's, he's risen to another level, hasn't he? Yep. As you say, hoisted himself into you know a really solid gun player now. Short kick from Swan, lands with penalty. So it's just present up play at the moment here from Collingwood as they soak it up as walls, he said. Harry O'Brien, it's almost like they're standing on the stage getting the ovation as Zach gives away 50 and Harry says, you idiot. And guess what? Harry's going to get a ping at goals from about 45 metres out on a 45 degree angle. This would bring the house to their feet. And Zach giving that 50 metre penalty away. Zach also today hasn't had a kick yet. That, you, is, that, that is incredible. Had the 10 handball, but Zach hasn't had, had a kick. As a fullback, hasn't oh. had a kick. Well, you know why? Because he can't kick. So That's you've right. got Baker and you've got Blake and you've you got, got Zach. Yeah. All they want to do is handball. Harry O'Brien lines up <laughs> from 49 out. The distance, not a problem. And the punt right in. A mile, and it's come out on grand final day. Just three great leaders. Shorey? Yes, he. You know Collingwood supporters better than me. When is it going to be safe for me uh, to go out? Uh, probably another week and a half. I think Christmas. Jolly rises high, got the tap rope, though, for St Kilda by Del Santo. Del Santo's kicked the rebound, has again the ball knocked away by Brown. Tidy up, man, for Collingwood is O'Brien. Goes short, ball. Well, he has waited. He's battled injury, and he's going to be a premiership player. Luke Ball, he's kicked to the wing, falls short. Gilbert takes the mark. It is Collingwood by 54 points. He went to Del Santo to half forward to Eddie. Threw it away. Picked up there by Jones to the forward pocket. He goes. Mills taking the mark. Tight angle, 25 metres out. Uh, Rebolt, free kick, I think. They? Oh, they're going to pay it. Sorry. It'll be Mills' kick. He's played on. He's opened up the angle. He kicks it around his body. And Stephen Mills kicks a goal. And that takes place at the 13-minute mark of the final quarter. 6-9. None of them. Zach Dawson has had a hand in the scores. Neither has Baker. Blake's had the one. Dempster's had the one. And the other defender, you can probably say Sam Gil- Fisher, Gilbert. two. Uh, Gilbert, one. October 1990. Never before have we had so many pregnancies in that month. <laughs> and I tell you what, babies arrived left, right and centre nine months later and you may well see the same as Collingwood go into attack again Cloak got the handball to Didac around the boundary to Jolly oh. drops a mark, needed to get hold of that one and kick the goal for his norm chances, handball's back to Didac he almost goes to ground, keeps it alive now with a kick around the corner high on the head of Blair and Blake takes the mark so it's 93-45 a 48 point Collingwood lead here at the 14 minute mark of the last quarter. What about Jared Blair? The story, gee, there's some good stories in this win Dempster took the mark. Oh, the kick from Dempster. Tried to find Schneider. Collingwood with the numbers again. He's sure 55 metres out to centre forward. They're lining up Collingwood. Wellingham marks. Wellingham plays on and Wellingham goals. (laughs) 
93,000. Uh, look, I think he's been terrific. Side bottom's been really good. McCaff has been really good. He was terrific early for them. Nathan Brown's done the job at centre half back on Rewild. I'm just thinking about the kids. Little Blair's battle, but yeah, done his bit. But uh, gee, they've got some talented young kids. People heading for the aisles. 93,853, as Tony Leonard mentioned here today. A great crowd for a rematch of a grand final involving the supporters and the grassroots. The kick goes forward into Collingwood's forward 50 again. They lead it by a whopping 54. And I'm not sure what St Kilda can get out of this next 10 minutes, if anything at all, other than they've lost another grand final. Three grand finals they have lost now in two years. Ten and a half minutes remaining in the game. Ross Lyon looks sucked of any energy or desire to, to be able to do too much at all at this stage, and you can't blame him. A big couple of weeks as Baker gets the kick out of the pack, and Maxwell that. takes the mark over the top of McWalter, 55 metres out. As Nathan Brown will come to the bench, Rewald will come to the bench. Crowd have missed it a little, but that is a big, big benching. Brown and Rewald, marvellous job by Brown. Outstanding job. I mean, and when you look at it, it's nearly impossible for a key defender to win the Norm Smith. But if ever a key defender deserved it, oh. it's today. And, and what about them? Just that contest here was the, the story of the day. McWalter against Maxwell, just playing above their weight. That uh, you know they just haven't got the matchups at all today. Maxwell using every second of his 30 seconds that's allowed. 52 metres out, he winds up on the arc and hammers a long one to the punt. But in so doing, yanked it a bit left and a minor score. So 15 goals, 10. They've kicked accurately today, Collingwood. 15, 10, 100 to St Kilda, 6, 9, 45. That's a 55-point Collingwood lead. On the RACB Business Insurance scoreboard, Dems to the kick to the middle of the ground. But it's all Collingwood oh, yet again. Is there a bit of a push? Going to go Goddard's way. Been wonderful again today, Goddard. Didn't have enough mates come with him in this week. As he tumbles one to centre forward, almost so tired, falls into the lap of Goldsack and go out wide to the outer wing. They're all running on big legs now, Collingwood. Didak wide, Beams takes the mark. Dawes is free, decides to go long. Side bottom had a wonderful game. Ball spills to the side. Jared Blair bounces it on the ground, oh. on the ground for one behind. <laughs> 15, 10, 100, the Pies, St Kilda, 6, 9, 45, 18, gone, final court, RACV Business Insurance scoreboard, little kick in marked by Lenny Hayes, Tony Shaw, tell us, tell us the emotions now, Shorey, with eight and a half minutes to go. Uh, it's relief, it's probably like it was in 1990 when that siren goes, just a relief that you're a winner again, and you've got to cross the line, Tony, oh, well done, the beans. Showed a bit of courage are you, back in the last Are you minutes. thinking as the captain out there, Shorey, about the moment you receive the Premiership Cup right now? Oh, or no, not? not now. Not now. You, you're just worried about getting to the siren. Now, they know they've got it won, but just finish that off. And then, the, you know, there's not even jubilation, I reckon, for an hour or so after the game. Right. It comes that night when you're all just settled down. But so it, it is really, I don't know how David King, he's been there twice. Bob Walsh, he's been there a number of times as a player. It is genuine relief. relief. The work's been worthwhile. The sacrifices have been worthwhile while and you're a group together that you'll have a bond for the rest of your life Rewalt back on the Tony, ground Tony Shaw, the last Collingwood Premiership captain for 3AW football through the middle Shaw has done a great job, that's Heath got it to Tooby, his kick was poor and Baker took the mark, just the handball to Zach who still refuses to kick the ball, fair enough we know why, Peak now on the half back line, to half forward he goes when the mark's taken by Eddie on the member side, along the boundary line he goes trying to get back there, Reed. the ball just fell to the feet of Schneider, ricochets from him, goes out of bounds, half forward right, 45 around from the St Kilda goal at the city end, little things are magnified at the point of the end of the season, little flaws become big gaps in, uh, in big games, guys that just can't kick the Ball yeah. in your back half are a liability. You can't have too many of them, and the Saints back line, it's full of them. Collingwood 101, St Kilda 45. The clearance from the pies towards the wing. Oh, lovely. At full tilt, parallel to the ground, Mark taken there by Cloak and Cloak BT to send Collingwood forward to centre half forward. Goes long looking for Jolly, he sets himself for the mark over the top of Zach, couldn't get it. Zach lost the track on it. Spills to uh, Gilbert, he was able to control it and get it to Hayes. Hayes with a handball in the middle to Goddard, the superstar. No one to kick to, no one at all, even now. So he pulls back and gives the handball to Del Santo. Now Milne involved, now Montagna has a look and said, I've got to go to Peak. Yeah. Peak now makes some ground, goes forward, hammers a long ball home. If it's not a goal, it's a bad kick. He is uh, dumb. And uh, the way he plays football isn't smart. How about no, the way that Reed's hobbling there? <laughs> He's in all sorts of walls. He gives it to him. 
Well, he deserved it. it, it, it some of his kicking today. Matter of fact, that kick was at the second quarter when they were were coming back. And Collingwood are going to break now. Ball's been got to the middle of the ground. Maxwell wide. Thomas takes the mark half forward on the boundary line, 50 metres out. Now, now look, what I'm to Pete gets the ball in the centre square. There are three Collingwood players back near the goal square. He, he's trying to kick it 70 metres. He'll never kick it 70 metres in his life. He kicks it 50 at best. And the three Collingwood players all look at each other and say, which one of us will make it? I tell you what, Daisy's a chance and Reed's coming off. Yeah, Ben Reed coming off, sure. Massive effort just to get back while the bloke to help the rotations. He has a break. Brown back on the rewind. Daisy Thomas has it. Collingwood by 56 points against the boundary line. He's given oh. it a real ride. Oh, oh hit the stick. Just, hit the stick, Ballsy. Yeah. Hit the stick. One behind. 15-12, <laughs> 102, Collingwood. St Kilda 6945, RACV. Business insurance scoreboard. Six, no, six nineteen to go. You just talk about that kicking efficiency, Rob. Nine St Kilda players have had a kicking efficiency less than 50%. Two have had none because they had a kick. Collingwood, just four players with an efficiency less than 50%. And you go through them and it's the players you mentioned. McAvoy, Dawson haven't had a kick. McWalter, Baker, Peak, Graham. Yeah. All today, poor kicking, probably Nick Rewall is at a kicking efficiency of 33%. St Kilda fans pouring out of the MCG. Collingwood looking like Tony, they're going to win their 15th premiership to join the others at the top billing. Of course, their, is it their 41st or 42nd grand final 42nd. appearance? 42nd grand final appearance with a replay, of course. Incredible effort as Jolly goes inside 50 with a poor kick. That has been marked oh. by Dempster. He gave it to Blake, who was not even looking, didn't want it. Blake now gives it off to Graham, who got knocked out early in the game, came back, and now the kick goes to Rewald, takes the mark. Gee, Ronk's cheers, Collingwood cheers, I don't know. The St Kilda fans are leaving in big numbers. Goes to Ray on to Gilbert. Gilbert's kick is short and sharp and finds an opportunity here with Mac Walter. And he'll line up directly in front, 40 metres out from goal. So uh, Nick Malthouse looking for his third premiership from geez. seven attempts. In grand finals. When you come down to the boundary line now, uh, Barge, oh, yep. good five minutes. You've got to enjoy the moment. Yep. Get down there. Get out there with the fans yeah. and the ball. Nick Walter directly in front. Set sail. Good looking ball. It'll be marked right on the line by Maxwell. Of course, he, he didn't waste even no Shepard. time. He plays on straight away and he heads towards the boundary line. Hit the boundary, they'd say. Thomas couldn't hold the mark, Tony, as it spills off hand. As Dempster comes through, it was Lachlan Partners player that they stuffed that time from Maxwell oh, as no, a little no. spearing pass goes in towards half forward, but Maxwell again knocks it away. Tony Shaw, tell us about this wonderful half-back line well, of Collingwood. Well, let me tell you about Nick Maxwell. I thought three years ago he wasn't good enough to be in the top 22, but everybody at Collingwood respects him. You know what I love about him? Honesty. He plays honest, and he also is an honest person off the field. O'Brien wins it from the stoppage. It's Collingwood by 57 points. Gave the handball to Swan to Ben Johnson. Going backwards at the moment, closer to full-back, but wants to go from the outer side of the member side. Delivers a pass. Lee Brown marks. Right on defensive halfback for Collingwood. This must be a wonderful time, sure, to be a oh, footballer. Yeah. And King, you know about it. Walsy knows about it. You just sit in this spot. So Bondy too. Sit in this spot. And you know this game's sewn up. You still, it's still, a, it's a, an amazing feeling though. And I'll say it again. It is only relief. And they will really love this tonight, the Collingwood boys. Uh, being controlled, of course. Yeah. As Ben Johnson knocks it around, it's all being played. Collingwood <laughs> controlling the football. Number of touches, still in defensive 50. And Dale Thomas, what a beauty, gets his hands on it late, late in the game. RACB business insurance scoreboard. Collingwood 15 12 102. St Kilda 6 9 45. 24 minutes gone, final quarter. The skipper's got the ball, BT kicks the halfback out of the side. Collingwood to win their 15th Premiership here. Goddard flew high and landed very, very awkwardly. But it's all junk time. Milne takes the mark. He's had a really, really poor game. He runs and he'll probably kick a goal from 45, although it's a little offline. Yeah, he's, got he's got it. It's a goal. And Milne kicks the goal. He's second of the game. Both of those coming in the last 10 minutes. And uh, they... That's a shame. It's, sorry, King. Yeah, it's a right. shame. It's not going to be a big night in the Collingwood. Well, as the area. But because we're not at Victoria Park now, yeah. it's going to be at the Lexus Centre or somewhere else. It's, it's a bit of a shame. Amy Stadium they're going to for the player presentation and then Good back on. to the convention centre. Jolly with fingertips yeah. yet again. Mick Malthouse down on the bench, shaking the hands of Penelby Reed and Boom. Zodard won it hard, gave the handball towards McAvoy who gave the haze, but the kick as he was tackled only fell the way of Thomas. Spears won the centre half forward. 
It's taken by Wellingham, oh. who kicks to fall forward. Side bottom, fly to the ball, takes the mark. This kid's been really good. Uh -oh. I'll just have a look at his stats. This will be his 25th disposal. And uh, the thing I like about side bottom is that he doesn't waste them. He just always puts it to advantage. I mean, the entire quality, Mick. Mick. Can I tell you what Mick's doing now? Yeah, he, is, guns on. he is orchestrating that all of his senior players are on the ground. He's actually gone to the runner and said, no, I want penalty on. Side bottom goals. As the goal is kicked, I want penalty on. I want Reed off. I want Blair off. Yeah. I want all my guns on the ground to enjoy the moment. 16-12-108 Collingwood, St Kilda 7-9-51. R.A. Touchton coaching for Collingwood yeah. now as an assistant. And of course Luke Ball playing as a Collingwood player now from St Kilda. Emotions boiling over down on the bench at the moment. Mick Malthouse down there. Dawes comes to the bench. So have a look at the young guys on the bench. Dawes, McCaffer, Beams and Blair as Mick shakes their hands. He's got all of his guns out there. We still have 227 remaining. And Scotty, you get your say. Who's going to be the Norm Smith medalist? I'm going to stick with D Jolly. I reckon he was the best when it counted most. Yeah, he was very, very good. And has had a pretty good last quarter too, Scotty. So he will certainly be in the running. Statistically, uh, Bondi. He's had 35 hitouts. Uh, Lee Brown's had 12, McAvoy's had 9, round the ground, Jolly a goal, 14 disposals, 6 marks. And of course those votes would be in now, they've got to be in at the 25 minute mark. And a very emotional MCG at the moment, it's supercharged, Collingwood fans ready to erupt. They don't normally vote Ruckman in big games like this, do they? They don't normally get the Norm Smith medal, it's normally a midfielder with a lot of volume of possession. Look at the bench, look at the Collingwood bench, there's not one person sitting down, there's about 40 helpers down there. Good Security on. having trouble controlling them at the moment. As the game goes on, it doesn't really matter what's happening in the middle at the moment. Amazing scenes we're about to see here at the MCG time. So middle of the ground, it's Collingwood 108, St Kilda 51. 28 minutes gone, a chance for a lady now for St Kilda. Schneider, the handball to Graham. He has a fly from 55 metres. Nick Maxwell runs again, takes the mark, refuses to concede anything and can go out wide. And it is going to be Heath Shaw. How Having sweet it will be for Luke Ball. Yeah, and I tell you the other one too that you love, and here he is, Luke Ball in the back pocket. He's had a great game. I tell you the other thing, the trainers, the doormen, the people, some of these blokes have been around the club for 45 to 50 years and seen one premiership. What about Tuvi? Had cramp there near the bench. No way is he coming off, staying on. You see the bench now, and I think that is the way it's going to stay. The Youngs and Mick... Uh, Aware of that moment and what it means to be out on the ground to finish. As Gwild hammers at home, they'll get another opportunity down the road, you think, with the age of this side. Here's he's Shaw. Kick was smothered. We're down to the last minute of the game. One minute in the grand final to go. And it is a 57-point lead to Collingwood as the ball tumbles forward for a behind for the Saints. 52 plays 108. Wow, we Can you believe it? Collingwood... <laughs> It's taken them 20 years to get another one, Shorey. Honestly, yeah. right now, you must be feeling oh. so good about your I'm, club. I'm just... Look, I, I think they've been the best side by far this year, but you've got to do it in September. They've had some struggles. You know, the draw was a struggle, so you've got to get across it. I tell you what, they are a super fit side, though, too. And they've got plenty of speed, and they spread the load deep. 35 seconds remaining in this game now. The crowd get to their feet as Lee Brown marks. A lot of St Kilda supporters have left, but not one Collingwood fan has left this arena. As the mark is taken by their hero, Swan, who will probably win the best and fairest, which will be conducted sometime in December. Oh, ball again. Because of the draw. 14 seconds and ticking. Didak has the ball. Who will end with the ball in their hands? Collingwood are going to win their 15th Premiership. Mick Malthouse with Keep his the third. Ball. Keep the ball. Didak has got the ball. Collingwood have won. Listen to the fans.
Walsh receiving congratulations from Jeff Walsh down there and a, a very emotional, he's right hand man. Collingwood players on the far side of the ground gather as one as the St Kilda players walk towards the middle of the ground. The one they let slip, Tony Shaw, their last oh. premiership captain. Where's Eddie Maguire? God, I want to see Eddie. I think he's run out there pretty early. He, but he looked for the man that's a beetroot colour. Nathan Buckley's involved there. Nathan has been short a couple of losing premierships, but he's involved. He's done, had a massive impact on this forward line this year. They have been just brilliant. Nick Moldhouse shaking hands with Andrew DiVincio. Let's hear what Nick's saying now with Channel 7 if we can. I'm not sure that we can hear that interview. They're a special group of young men, aren't they? The noise is deafening. Let's you win a premiership. I, I take out the Saints. You know, they're no less special, but it's our day we won. So, fantastic. Nick, you haven't been in this situation since 1994. That's a long time ago. Does this one feel like it did back there in 1994? Oh, wrong time to answer that, really. Uh, wrong time to ask it, wrong time to answer it. It's just been... Well... I, I, I just... You know, West Coast, West Coast, but I, I've just done it for... I just think there's so many things there for the great Collingwood Army that have put up with a hell of a lot, and... I just think it's fantastic. We might leave fantastic. that. The noise is just so oh. deafening here at the moment. It is absolutely unbelievable as Nick Malthouse completes that interview out of the middle with Tim Watson, courtesy of Channel 7. Josh Fraser down there too. Yeah, there's always the, the horrible stories too, that Josh has been around for a long time, been a great server, but you know, the body was falling apart for Josh this year. You've got Lockyer, you've got O'Bree, you've got Leon Davis. I haven't seen Leon down here. He probably would be in the, within the mix, but every great story has got those tragic stories too, BT. It has indeed. Collingwood players gather and hug. I'm looking at Nick Rewald in the middle of the ground with Lenny Hayes, his great mate, and both of those players standing together, talking, just watching the Collingwood celebrations before their eyes. They can't believe it as the Collingwood faithful break into rhythm music here. Ross Lyon now enters the arena and walks out onto the ground looking as sluggish as you've ever seen a man look. Unbelievable scenes. Look at the Collingwood players and officials now gathering in a huge circle at centre half forward to sing the song. Have a look at this. Haven't seen this before. Everyone that is anyone at the Collingwood Football Club is in a huge circle at centre half forward at the city end. And they are belting out the song. And here yeah. comes Annie. Annie would have been at the club, BT, for a... Oh. As long as I was involved at the club, she was the one who gave them all the uh, uh, the snakes and the Gatorade and all the uh, property stuff too. It was just fantastic scenes down there. Nick Maxwell, arms around Nick Malthouse, captain and coach, as they go into a raving rant out there. It shows you how many people are involved in the footy oh, yeah. It's not about the players. How many it's, people would be in that circle? Oh, 100? It'd be, it'd have to be, have to be close to 100 in there. Yep. And, it, it takes all those guys to get everything right for 12 months to give you this luxury, this that, opportunity. That is an amazing circle. I actually haven't seen that done on the ground before. Uh, it's unique. Um, all the players who didn't play are in there too. Yeah, all the officials. Uh, Shorey just pointed out Annie, who's for years run the oh, kitchen down yeah, there. Yeah, they've done that well, haven't they? They've done that really well. Yeah. I mean, that's a touch of class to go back to your people who make things functional for your football club. It's, not, it's about the players today, obviously, and they'll be remembered for the rest of their lives. But those special moments yeah. for those special people, Good aren't they, people. They great people. Do it for nothing. What they we do need, it for nothing. What we need to do is find Patrick Keane out there, boys, because he always walks up to the Norm Smith medalist by security. I don't normally do that. I think you normally meet up in the rooms. I, I yeah. can't, yeah, so yeah, some of them have stuck on. Yeah, so there's a few out there. And most of the others have been restricted from entering the arena. Fair enough, too. This is about a, this is more a public event, isn't it? Yeah. Inside the rooms, as Shorey says, is when the girls... We'll Ladies and gentlemen, options. before we begin our presentation, the AFL would like to acknowledge our premier partner, Toyota. With David Butler joining us on the ground, to David and the Toyota team, thank you for the support you give the great game of Australian football. It's been a very tough day oh. here at the office for the St Kilda Football Club. Please welcome their skipper, Nick Revolt, to say a few words.
So what we're going to do, boys, when the medallions are put around the neck, I'll get a comment off each of you guys after Craig Willis mentions their name. Here is Nick Rewalt coming to the dais as the losing skipper today. Congratulations to Collingwood. Clearly the better team on the day. Well done, guys. For the, our boys and our supporters in Kilda Football Club. Didn't stop fighting today all year, and we won't stop fighting either. Keep your heads up. Nick Rewalt, the losing skipper. Gee, that's hard. I, I, I don't Thank know, you, Nick. Do we need that? Ladies and gentlemen, please now make welcome former North Melbourne Premiership player and best of field in the 1977 grand final replay, Arnold Brightus, to present the Norm Smith medal to the player adjudged best of field today in Mark II of the 2010 grand final. Kick five in the replay in 1977 after kicking about seven behinds in the original grand final. Here's Arnold Brightus. And the winner of the Norm Smith medal for 2010 is Scott Embry from Collingwood. Scott Pendlebury has won it, although Arnold struggled to get it out. Might yeah. have been on the Turks, Arnold. He looked, oh, right. he looked resplendent in the pink tie. Had a little bit of Ernie Ells about it, that one, didn't it? Yeah, and the Ells. Just <laughs> couldn't quite get it out there, but I think we deciphered that Scott Pendlebury has won the Norm Smith medal. Well, Let's hear Scotty. from Scotty. Firstly, to St Kilda, you guys are a hell of a sight, so well done. Um, our boys, uh, this is the best feeling I've ever had. Um, let's hope there's a few more to come. Thank you. Scott Pendlebury, the second Norm Smith medalist. Congratulations, Scott. Well, thank you. Well, it's every young footballer's dream to be on this ground on the grand final day. And it's with much pleasure that we are now going to invite 22 participants from the NAB AFL Auskick program. And they'll present the Premiership medallions to the players of the Collingwood Football Club. Number four. Alan Didak. Sure. Oh, it's, he's just been a great player this year. He's had 21 possession to know everyone that would be perfect. He kicked his two goals one, but uh, he is just an out and out star. Everybody said he's like Peter Dacos. Well, he gives you that touch. Number six, Tyson Goldsack. Well, he came into the team in place of Leon Davis, and uh, I reckon he did his job pretty well. Kicked the goal in the first quarter, played a roll up forward where he negated the uh, St Kilda forwards, and uh, well done to Tyson. Number eight, Harry O'Brien. 18 disposals, really bounced back from the poor display last week. He kicked a big goal, he enjoyed it, the big Brazilian anaconda. He had a great day. He'll be in their top five players today. Number 10, Scott Pendlebury. Well, there it is. Norm Smith medalist, 2010 Premiership. He's a class act, got enormous poise, and today he just showed that. Had a bad game last week, but was injured early in the game. Number 12, Luke Ball. Oh, yeah. Well, he's getting a cheer from both sides. I'm looking down at the St Kilda fans, and they are applauding their former skipper. Changed clubs this year. 25 disposals, 10 contested possessions out of Number 13, Dale Thomas. Oh, he must have been close to being the Norm Smith medalist, Dale Thomas. 27 disposals, one goal, two. He was involved in everything defensively. That was the best part of his game today. I thought he was fantastic. Dale Thomas receiving the Premiership medallion from one of the young kids. Number 15, Lee Brown. Well, he's done his job this year. You know, they didn't go with Josh Fraser, went with a mobile play. He can play everywhere, matter of fact. Defence, forward. He's done his job, Lee Brown, this year. A good pickup. As he receives his medal. Number 16, Nathan Brown. Well, listen to the roar, because Nathan Brown, two weeks in a row, has played on Nick Rewalt, taken the honours. And this is a young fellow who came into the team when Preston Giacomo couldn't take his place. What a wonderful final Number 17, series. Dane Beam. Solid today. Without being spectacular, solid today, Dane Beam. Only the 11 disposals. But it was the grunt work that he did, the harassment. He only had the three tackles on the tackle sheet, but his pressure was first class. Number 18, Darren Jolly. Well, I always said that this side needed a ruckman of ilk, and he has now led this side to a premiership. His first half was sensational. Set up this second half and set up this win for the Pies. Number 20, Ben Reid. Well, another young Pie defender, played centre-half back, played on Kaczynski for a lot of the game, came off injured, came back on, and did his bit for the side. Number 21, Sharrod Wellingham. Well, he could become an elite player, Sharrod Wellingham. He was fantastic again today. 20 disposals, two goals. 
his class in his game is enormous. I think he's a huge mm. talent, this boy. Number 22, Steel Sidebottom. Probably one of the greatest games you've ever played for this club. 25 possessions, two goals. And what is his ungainly top, but he finds space, he gets in front, and he's a good competitor. Well done to the youngster. Presents the hat to the young kid as well. Number 26, Ben Johnson. Well done, John. I love Ben Johnson. Been at Collingwood for over a decade. Uh, can play anywhere, kick the goal, does the defensive things well. Through number blue, 30, Brett McAvoy. Ah, oh, he was serviceable again today. He's finished with the two goals. He's unassuming. You just you don't really notice that he's out there, and all of a sudden he, he bobs up in little holes and impacts the scoreboard. Solid effort today. Number 31, Christos. Well, we always use that word structure. Well, I think this bloke has made the Collingwood forward structure. He gets in front. He's got a big body. Brings the ball to the ground. He's a fantastic. Competitor. He's kicked his Number two 32, goals for the day. Travis Cloak. Well, done, Cloak. well, big hand for Travis Cloak. Not his best day, just had the eight disposals, didn't kick a goal, but uh, he's been the key to the forward line all year. Number 34, Alan Tooby. He's been a beauty. All year, Alan Tooby been a fantastic contributor, a major <laughs> part of this back line now. His intercept play is understated. 15 disposals, all of them hit the target. He's waiting for the ninth grand final next Number 36, year. Dane Swan. Well, Dane Swan, he's just been sensational all year. Listen to the mighty roar. Stiff not to get the brown eye. That doesn't matter. He's got a premiership medallion. Number 39, Heath Shaw. Well, I just swapped my balls here because <laughs> I wanted to have Heath. Uh, I think he's just one of the generals in their defence. Uh, played a great game again today. He's had his 28 possessions. Smart he player. sets up. He doesn't. He doesn't miss. Number 47, like Jared Blair. Probably the third best short too. He, he deserved it, Blair. He deserved it to well be a premiership so. player. His last half of the season, fantastic. Look, he's probably last one pick, but he contributed every week. Well done, young fella. He's nearly as big as the little league kid. <laughs> Number five, the captain, Nick Maxwell. Well done, Nick. What a skipper. Well, I tell you what, as I said before, wasn't seen. He was uh, discarded by Geelong, but he gets his opportunity here. He is admired by all these players. And the way he goes about his football, well, I love it. Please join with me in welcoming Australian Football Hall of Fame member and Premiership coach David Parkin to present the Jock McHale medal to the coach of the 2010 Toyota AFL Premiership team, the Collingwood Football Club, Mr Mick Malthouse. David Parkin to present this Jock McHale medal to the winning coach. Mick Malthouse, his third Premiership, seven grand finals, three different clubs. David Parkin puts the medal around the neck of Mick Malthouse, who's had an outstanding year. Here he is to say a few Thank words. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd be uh, remiss not to, first of all, one of the things that someone said to me straight after the game, oh, how fantastic your side has been. Well, I've always believed that um, you're going to be very, very humble winners and gracious in defeat. The Saints have been outstanding in the last few years, and I've got to applaud them for their the way they play and the way they go about it. So the AFL put on another magnificent opportunity for those sides to come together and play before, I don't know how many people here, but I say, let's say 90 plus thousand. Uh, they should be commended for the way that the, the competition has been run and the simple fact that we are probably one of the most watched competitions in the in the world per head of population is, is an outstanding achievement by the AFL. To our, I'm not going to go through all the sponsors, but our sponsors or our partners have been outstanding. The board have been terrific in their backup. To the supporters, I just feel so tremendous for you blokes who have stuck with us through good times and bad. You've always supported us, the way you've come out, training, as I said, from sometimes when we haven't played so well, you've been there, you've stuck with us, and it's your trophy. <laughs> to the playing group, I can say this now because I've only got one, I think one more year left, Ed. Um, they are my boys and I love them dearly, they have been outstanding. So, I just, um, 
thank you all so very much for your wonderful support. And once again, we've proven that this great game is in truly is truly great. Thank you very much. A nicely camouflaged comment there oh, from boy. the Premiership coach, Nick Boldhouse. Here is the captain, Nick Maxwell. <laughs> Just uh, want to reiterate what Mick said about the Saints. They've been one of the dominant teams the last few years, and I'm sure your time will come, so make sure you stick with them. They're led very well, and they're going to be up there again next year. I want to thank uh, our major sponsors, Emirates, Adidas, Aussie and Westpac. They allow us to uh, go to Arizona for training camp to build the Westpac Centre. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to do what we did today. <laughs> to the AFL and their major sponsor, Toyota, again, uh, thank you for all your support. It'll allow us to do what we love doing every single week. Perfect so far, dotted all the I's and, across uh, the T's. 22 guys ran out today, but it took everyone on our list to get to this stage, and a lot of guys didn't get to pull on the black and white, but uh, those guys are just as important as the ones who did. The feel for Simon Prestigier, Tomo, Leon Davis, and many others. Finally, it's been a long 20 years. And you've stuck by us the whole way. This one's for you guys. Thanks to everyone out there. The captain of Collingwood, Nick Maxwell, on the day as shakes hands with Nick Moldhouse. Still the players have not got up there as one. And ladies and gentlemen, I now have much pleasure in inviting 1972 and 1973 Coleman medalist of the Australian Football Hall of Fame member, Peter McKenna, to present the Premiership Cup to Nick Maxwell, Michael Moldhouse and the Collingwood Football Club. Peter McKenna shaking the hands of Mick Malthouse and Nick Maxwell. And there it is, hoisted by captain and coach. The Premiership Cup as the players converge on the dais. And Mick saying to the boys, have a look at this. This is why we play. As they get on the stage, the confetti has been timed perfectly for one of the few times over the last 10 years. So, well, Mick has not moved. He's still got the hand on the cup. He has not moved one inch. The boys are jumping around. He looks a bit nervous like he might get knocked off it, but well done. He's done a great job. He's got a process that he goes through. He hasn't changed that nearly over his whole career, but he's built a list that can play it beautifully, and they have been that disciplined. Yes, well there you have it, the players leave the dais, and uh, I won't say subdued, exciting, but I think the week has drained a little bit out yeah, of everyone, and just trying to join in the celebrations, there's still a lot of people in the ground, still 70,000 in the ground here at the moment, as the players come down for the obligatory photo that will be adorn the front page of the Age and the Herald Sun tomorrow, St Kilda players and officials leave the arena. And now it's all about acceleration. Collingwood today by 56 points. 16-12, 108, defeating St Kilda, 7-10-52. The victory lap is about to get underway. Tony Leonard starting at the city end of the ground. Indeed it is. And the first port of call of the Collingwood Army right behind the goals. At the city end, underneath the Pontford stand, it's been building Shorey. This is this is no real surprise because what they've been able to achieve, build the side. It is yeah. laced with young talent. They've been good and they rose to greatness. Oh yeah, it has been. There've been a couple of preliminary finals, so they've been close to it, Tony. But they, I think the four or five younger players, that, you know, Wellingham, Pendlebury's still young, but um, side bottom, those like Beams, they have really just given this side something different. And now's a, an interesting time. I tell you what, I, I don't know, in 1990, but I was gone. I just walked around. I couldn't, you know, you, you take it all in, you wade in, you grab each other a couple of times. I remember Peter Dacos and Dennis Banks with the three of us had been involved in losing grand finals. And it was just great to walk 100 metres of this, probably arms in arm, talking about the hardships that we went through. And we did go through, through some bad times, but that's what these players look forward to now. They'll do it slowly. They'll get around 20 years of joy to see the people in the crowd just sensation. And Shorey. 
when uh, everyone was round at your place, yeah, was it? Uh, come on, Uncle Tone, with Heath and Reese and Braden, your son, asking, just tell us what it was like to win it. Uh, Every time you tell them the story. Oh uh, yeah, not a, not a lot because you know what, they've got to make their own way. And uh, matter of fact, but you, you've got to really divorce yourself from it. Yeah, I, you know the other person I feel for is is Reese Shaw because he, he went through a lot of the hardships of this side too yeah. when they had some of their defeats. And, you know, uh, he's gone on now and he's having a great career at the Sydney Swans, but he'd be wrapped for his, uh, uh, for his brother. And as, uh, you know, Ray Shaw, Ray left the ground 10 minutes before the 1990 siren. He couldn't cope emotionally with it, but we had a big day the next day. But that's what the family, uh, you know, meant to uh, Collingwood Footy Club and also the Shaw family. We just love that association. They've given us enormous joy and they've given us a chance to do something that we love through a whole family, which has uh, been unbelievable. And uh, we know he's ever-present. He's basically the, not only the face of Collingwood, but we see him a lot in football. But you pay tribute to Eddie McGuire, what he did when he stepped in in your last year down this Well, year. you know what, he, he gave me the chance to leave Collingwood with my dignity, which, you know, I, I don't know whether I deserved that or not, but I, I didn't have success as a coach. We knew Mick Moldas was coming in 10 weeks prior to my leaving the club, and I hope we did so. We played as many kids as we could in that period of time. And blokes like, you know, Lockyer, who, you know, Preston Giacomo, they started when I was uh, finishing, but uh, I, I'm going to give it to Eddie. He's, he's been a class act. He, he wears his heart on his sleeve, but he's gone through hell for this club, and he's set this up, club up now for hopefully a decade of success and a bit more. So he, he deserves every credit, I think. He has been the catalyst of this side being successful on and off the field over that last decade. Walls, he talk about triple premiership coach now, Michael Moldaus. Well, he's uh, he's had to wait a while to get the third one. If you look at Mick Moldhouse's coaching record, I reckon what he did at Footscray, his first thing was terrific. Six years at Footscray, got them into the finals. Back those days, it was a final five. And because of his uh, good effort there, West Coast was keen to get him. He went over to the West Coast and coached West Coast for 10 years. They made the finals every year. They won the two premierships in uh, 92 and 94. And uh, now he's been at Collingwood for, what is it, 10, 11 seasons? The 11th season, was it? 11 seasons, a uh, couple of uh, losses in grand finals, early days to Brisbane. They, they, weren't, they weren't good enough to beat Brisbane. Brisbane at their very best. But I reckon uh, the thing I admire about him is that he's just persist. He's, uh, he's very professional. He's thorough. His players like playing for him. And you heard it from the coach at the end there. He loves this group. He said, I've got one year to go coaching them, and uh, I can say it. I love these boys. They're my boys. This will be really sweet for him. And look, they may well win the premiership next year. What a way to go out. At Collingwood, uh, say, 12 years as coaching, certainly one premiership, maybe two coming up. And I hope he enjoys summer. He deserves that. The thing that I like about this Collingwood team, eight players who are going around the boundary at the moment have played basically 50 or less games. Gee, it's a young side. And that just gives you so much hope for the future. And of the older players, and I'm talking about your Maxwells and O'Briens, they've got heaps of footy left in them. You know, Jolly's got three, another three years as a ruckman. So I, I can't see any of those players. Swan's just hit his best. Benny Johnson, terrific. He's sure terrific. They've got that many young players that it's all positive for them. And I reckon the other thing, there would be five Collingwood players who didn't get selected today who are really good footballers. You can't say that about St Kilda. No. They haven't got five who didn't get selected who are really good players, and that's the worry for the Saints. I reckon their window's gone. Got uh, a text here from the Magpies already uh. sent out to all of their members telling them that there's merchandise available and if they'd like to purchase, they should do that quickly. By the way, the fans are being encouraged to go back to Amy Park, which is across the road, the new venue. The Premiership Cup will be presented to the supporters there at 8 o'clock tonight and then back to the Convention Centre for all of the officials. BT, I've got 10 Tony Shaw 1990 caricatures in the boot. <laughs> yeah. They were going for $100 at the start of the day. Five bucks fifty, you got them. Anybody want to meet me at the car park? Have a look at this. All the team officials on the <laughs> day are getting <laughs> their photo on. taken while the Premiership team come around. Shane McGuinness, they're just passing you down in front of the Northern Stand now. It's really quite incredible uh, down here, BT, as you can imagine. Just this bumping into the air. We'll try and get uh, Darren Jolly. He's about to pass us now. Uh, it's really just quite incredible. Darren, 
it's, it's just an amazing feeling down here. And uh, the, the boys, they're not overly keen on dropping. Hey, hey, congratulations. Uh, Steel, how are you feeling right now? This is amazing, mate. Awesome. It's one thing everyone dreams of to actually be here and take a part in it. It's fucking unbelievable, mate. Mate, your second season and you're a premiership player. Can you believe the crowd down here? This is incredible. Mate, this is, this, yeah, this is unbelievable. So, as I said, you're dreaming this stuff. And dreams, you know, they say don't come true, but this comes true is unreal. Mate. When did you know you had it? When did you know it was in the bag? Um, I suppose halfway through the last quarter, it started to sink in. So. Take it like that. Enjoy it, mate. Good on you. Uh, uh, still side bottom down there with Shane McGuinness as oh, the players go past the interchange area. They're within about 100 metres of finishing this uh, lap of honour, which has become so famous in footy, David King. I reckon you forget, as a player, what it means to people. Just this this day and this moment, you forget the passion. And I sometimes reckon there's as much passion, if not more, in the supporters than there is some players. They, they maybe haven't got the skill to carry out what these players are doing, but, gee, it's not through lack of want or lack lack of passion. Have a look at them. I mean, this is an amazing time, isn't it, for the Collingwood uh, fans. They've really done it pretty hard. What about Nick Maxwell years. standing on the fence here on the northern stand in front yes. of all the fans. He's actually got up on top of the fence, raised the Premiership Cup in front of the fans. Down there has Nick Maxwell. The security aren't all that happy about it, I've got to say. They're well, coming from everywhere. Well, the security's busy, BT. Yep. At last count, they've got 12 Magpie fans <laughs> uh, face first, slammed into the turf, yeah. putting their handcuffs on them. And a couple that don't look like they should have jumped the fence <laughs> because they look like they were never going to get away. <laughs> you know you know the thing about this lap is that the cup, it's nice, the cup there, but it, it sort of fades away. It, it's more the faces on your teammates. You, you're looking at the crowd a little bit, but... Just so as I said, to walk 50 metres with each teammate and just yeah. soak it in so and, the cup together. So becomes more significant Yeah, later, later down. At, well, yeah. I, I remember I took the cup home in 1990 that night. Yeah. You slept with it. I slept with it, yeah. I kicked my wife out. But then I remember walking into the Collingwood Social Club first floor next morning at about 10 in the morning. Have a guess who was up on the bar of the Collingwood Social Club first floor bar. Darren Mullane. Hadn't been home. Darren Mullane, he looked down at me with those eyes. Yeah, that a big one. And he said to me, give me the cup. I didn't. I wasn't going to argue with Darren Mullane, well, and I never saw it again. The dinner, the official dinner, I think, was at the Southern Cross. Southern in Cross, yeah, 1990. Well, we spoke with Sean Mullane, Darren's brother, and, and his mother Denise uh, this morning, and that, I just feel for people like that. Yeah. It's a special yeah, moment yeah. for those people. And, you know, I just, I, I can't wait to get out and about tonight in the city. It's going to be a wild night, the town tone. And you know what? I'd love to see. I'd love to see that number. 42 bought out now so someone can wear it next year. Well, this yeah. is like the turning point, I reckon. We did ask that question. I don't think they were too keen, but I agree uh, with you. Oh, well, I reckon time. it's got to happen. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, it, it's an unselfish situation when you want to win premiership. Darren Mullane, he was a warrior. He loved to have his jumper running around on one of these young kids. Now, what about this? Darren Jolly? Yeah, Eddie Maguire was just about to grab the premiership cup. Darren Jolly stole it out of his hands, <laughs> ran to the cheer squad walls, and is now enjoying the comfort of them. No Collingwood player is enjoying this any more than Darren Jolly. He led them on the victory lap. He's got the cup. He's run to the fans. Joffa's down there and uh, they will just sing themselves hoarse. Unbelievable scenes as the Collingwood players are about to leave the arena here for the last time in 2010. Harry O'Brien. Yeah, the fans are gathered around the race, all of the officials. No one's left the arena. There's still a good 50 to 60,000 people in here at the moment which is quite unbelievable given the fact we are in a rematch situation as now the players start to go from the ground nick maxwell throws himself at a couple of either <laughs> fans or family members that are very very close to the race as they now depart i tell you what that medal too bt that medal does not leave your body for at least Five to six days. <laughs> you sleep with it. You just wake up. You think it's just been a dream. Is that the most important thing to a player? Oh yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. You you just don't want to part with it. And uh, some of, blokes have lost them. A couple of weeks <laughs> down the track, you get a little replica cup, but it means nothing right. compared uh, to the compared to the medal. Nah. And you're, you're down there looking at them. You're always well, jealous of the guy who's got two. Have a look at this. We've gone down into the rooms now. The players have left the room. Now this is where they get the opportunity to catch up with their family. We're seeing some in-house monitors yeah. here, and we're getting some Channel Seven feed. And this is the moment the players look really look forward to it. They've shared it with the supporters, yeah. and they'll do that again tonight. But now they get an opportunity with brothers and sisters, mums and dads, wives and girlfriends. The people, the people who have yeah. sacrificed the most, Joey, they're the people that you want to spend it with, and it's family and friends and, and, and partners, as you say. And 
I just saw Brian Evans, the doorman. He's been there since the 1953 Premiership. Yeah. Uh, Rowan Bounds, one of the trainers, had a fight with cancer. So, you know, there's a lot of these people who have been there for a long time and only seen it once in their lifetime. Rowan Bounds was here in 1990, but went for a bit of a battle. And as we said before, Annie there. Uh, it is unbelievable. It's uh, just great it to see. They're gathering in the rooms as uh, we uh, say at the moment. Nathan Brown in the middle. We're going to get out of the song very, very shortly as the players. Just uh, in a moment, you can see Annie Martin down there, who yeah. Tony Shaw mentioned before. Bobby Nesbitt, the doorman. He yeah. wouldn't let my old man in one one time. He's, my old man went up. He said, oh, I've got to get in at Victoria Park. He said, what's your name? He goes, Red Shaw. He said, well, you're the fifth one who said your name was Red Shaw, <laughs> mate. You're not coming in. <laughs> Unbelievable. Eddie Maguire was seeing on Shane screen. Shane Being congratulated by Shane O'Brien and, of course, uh, Muzzy Eda from Blue Star Logistics, one of their supporters there, as Eddie welcomes every player into the rooms. Make sure they're all in before they sing the sock. The uh, Premiership Cup is placed on the floor. Let's go to Scotty Cummings and uh, get a more feel of what's happening, Scotty. It's just sheer elation. Here we go. Cups in the middle. Boys all around. Medals on. down there and amongst it. Uh, Scotty, uh, we'll leave it with you for a minute or two. Tell us what's happening. Uh, just, uh, as you'd expect, just sheer elation. The champagne got pulled out already, so it's very early for champagne. Boys just uh, all in a huddle. There's probably, uh, there's probably 500 people on here. And as the boys said, the story said before too, just so many people get involved in, uh, in winning a premiership. And uh, this is just a fantastic moment. We're going to grab one of the boys. We're going to have a chat with uh, whoever we can, whenever we can. We're going to try and speak to everybody in here. All right, well, what's happening at the moment is the players are... Players yeah, sorry. yeah, go on, Scotty. Tell oh, no, no, sorry, mate. The uh, players are just all still hugging each other. I don't think you can... Uh well, the boys will be able to explain. There's more champagne by Travis Cloak. Yeah, so Try and get heat, Scotty, if you can. Righto. Okay, That's, so Scotty set fine, a task there as we see the players now having a swig out of the, the Premiership Cup. That has oh. been filled to the brim with wine, probably Moe or something, I don't know. They're not wasting a drop either as they uh, do that. Let's go back to Heath Shaw with Scotty coming. Hey, good on you, Shorty. How are you feeling, buddy? Uh, I'm more tired from that lap of honour than um, <laughs> that actual game. Mate, my arms are killing me. Mate, just a magnificent performance, wasn't it? It's just the boys all day. Pressure was magnificent. You really deserved this, buddy. Yeah, I suppose, mate. Uh, we set the standard in the first half last week and just wanted to do four quarters, mate. And uh, tell you what, it's a pretty good feeling. Heath, Uncle Tony, mate, congratulations. Uh, I'm feeling for your father now and I'm feeling for your brother, but sensational, mate. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Tony. Now I'm the, uh, the latest Collingwood <laughs> player in the family to win a premiership. <laughs> ah, geez, uh, you must have brought a tear to your eye. It, it looked like you're in control pretty well out, mate. What are you, what are you feeling now? Are you, you feeling for your dad? I just, I just saw Dad on the way in, mate, and uh, it, yeah. it genuinely nearly brought a tear to my eye, but um, I suppose that's what all hard work goes to, mate, and uh, just wrapped. You had some great stories. Uh, Luke Ball, we've just seen him on the TV now. Darren Jolly, players who come in, young Blair, and there's always those tragic about the players who didn't make it, but that list of about 32 players got you across the line, really. Oh, mate, it's, uh, it, takes, it takes all 44 guys on the list to get to, get to where we've got to today, and... I'm proud of every single one of them, and everyone's a part of it, and, um, mate, we're just wrapped. We're just absolutely stoked. Good on you, Heath. Uh, Rob Wall's up here, uh, and, and you did it in style, and the way that everyone spoke after the game, I think your coach, your captain, uh, it's going to be one that you'll remember forever, but uh, you've done it with class. Thanks, mate, and uh, I think... Uh, I think we'll be shutting down the city over the weekend. <laughs> Heath, congratulations. Brian Taylor here, mate. What, what do you want to do now? What, what's the first thing you want to do right now? Mate, I want to sit down. Yeah. I really do. But you know what? There's that many people in here. There's that many people I want to thank, mate. I'm going to get around. I'm going to thank every single one of them. Well, good on you, mate. Uh, appreciate you joining us. And uh, Scotty's going to grab us another player. Congratulations to your marvellous effort. Thanks, guys. Heath Shaw down there wants to and make sit sure you, down. Make sure you leave your car keys at home, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it is a taxing time, isn't it? Oh. I mean, Oh, yeah. The, the emotional drain. You're just, you're just absolutely spent now. They've done the extra lap, as he said. I'll tell you what, they won't come down for days. That'll be, be an amazing 48 hours for these guys. I, I'm jealous.